Hello everybody, welcome to the June 2020 Q&A, the year that will never end. Uh, I am joined by some lovely allies and we're here to answer your wonderful questions. Isabel told me this morning we made it halfway through. <laughs> Oh. She's like, has this year been short for you or is it just me? I'm like, Isabel, you're not helping. Right <laughs> <now."> <laughs> Isabel! For once, you're positive. Isabel, drink your whiskey. Pissing me off. <laughs> Our first question comes in from Alexander Zirinov. Hello, allies. Which company will you overcome first? IGN or Digital Foundry? Well, I think we already provide better technical analysis than Digital Foundry. So, <laughs> like, you know, the question answers itself, I guess. IGN, we're dreaming big. Dreaming big, yeah. Are we dreaming big or are we dreaming small? <laughs> I mean, Shots. Digital Foundry is smaller views wise, but we don't do anything that they do. <laughs> True. Like, Digital Foundry is the freaking best, and I want to, like, ally with them. I don't want to, like, take them over. So. What are we going to offer them? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah. What are we going to do for them? We're going to offer yeah. more invaluable <laughs> skills at. <laughs> <laughs> I used to cut at Reading game trailers. Plays. We used to cut those split screen videos, though, showing like here's the Xbox one, here's the the PlayStation one. And I remember we like so. we produced like hundreds of those. And I think yeah. once in one part of a video, we got the Xbox PS3 thing wrong. And then of uh, course, it's conspiracy theory from that day. <laughs> it's like, you know how easy it is to make that dumb mistake. Like, oh, come on. Uh, my my sync was off, and the audio was a little bit out of balance. I think so. Let me know if we've improved things. Chat. Sorry about that. Continue. All right. Cool. Sounds seems good. Um. I, to take this question seriously, though. <laughs> uh. I don't know. I, I, I'm not really interested in overtaking anybody. I don't think there's a way to take that question yeah, seriously. Can, but, <laughs> All right, yeah. you know what? Fair, take, take this fair. question seriously, Ben. <laughs> lips or earlobes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, lips well, all lips. day. It's lips not a, all day. Kiss yeah. on the lips. That, that's an easy question to take seriously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> lips all day, blood. But point taken, blood word. <laughs> All right, our next question comes in from Brandon. Hello, allies. Uh, with E3 being all digital this year, do the allies think that's how it will be going forward, or will the ESA try to cling on to an in-person convention? Do you think there's anything at all they can do to keep the physical convention going for a prolonged time, like lower ticket prices or a better organized event to benefit media and public goers? Hope everyone is well in these crazy times. I wonder if we get like a weird Judges Week E3 crossover. Where, like, they don't do the convention center thing anymore. Like, they're not willing to spend money on that. But, like, people still come to L.A. and we still go to events at different locations. You know? Do like we do at Judges Week. Like, like go to an appointment. Santa Monica yeah. in 2007. Do you uh, yeah. need a, a separate ticket for the Xbox event? The Microsoft one? Because they're, like, down the street, right? Sort of. Um, I mean, it's... Yeah. I mean, the, the conferences have always been separate than okay. E3. Um... And I think that because they're in a different building, you might need to like a check-in or something. Like if Sony does check-ins too in their booth since the public yeah. started showing up. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the Microsoft like showcase in terms of like going in and playing demos and stuff like that's still part of E3. And God. Yeah. Because okay. I was I'd be gonna surprised say, if we get an actual E3 conference in 2021. It seems like it'd be too early, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, if things go back to normal, then I think they'll totally try to do E3 next year. Yeah. If there's money to make, they're going to try to do it. Yeah, I just, like, if I feel like it's so close to being all digital now. Like, if just one or two big companies pulls out, then that's the thing. Like E3 yeah. as we know it is toast, you know? Like, that's the thing, though, Nintendo's Brad. I don't, I don't think anyone like, makes no. money. <laughs> I think everyone loses money on E3. No, the people that In the long run the run convention do, but, make yeah. money. So they're going to try to do everything they can to court right. publishers and developers to come there. Yeah. Well, I, Vegas I, reopened. I don't think we're going to... I think E3 will continue to change. I don't think, yeah. like, the, the way things are going, I don't think suddenly everything's going to be normal again. Um, and I think as long as you have the things to get the audience, that's really all that matters. Like, the response to the PlayStation 5 reveal event, you know, regardless of how you feel about PlayStation or whatever it drew in the, a huge audience and that's all they care about. Like if, if they don't have to spend a ton of money 
and resources on a convention from from a purely financial standpoint why would you do that if you can get the same benefit um and even now with like the cyberpunk thing and people remoting in to play it like things are going to change a lot here's a question though ben for you yeah uh the you say the same benefit Mm-hmm. Do you think a digital event has the same benefit as a full blown out like God of War like they did orchestral? Do you think they they get the same event? I obviously know the God of War year that's going to cost them a shitload of money. Uh, I, but do you think they get the same? I same don't benefit? think it, I don't think it's the same yet. I think to clarify my stance, I don't think, you know, I hated E3 this year. I hated it. Not a fan. Not how I want to do it. Um, There are a lot of problems. I'm just saying, I think they would work to continue to improve this format than try to go back to the convention. I think it can be constantly improved in a way that in the long run is probably even better for them. So are, are they exactly the same now? No. Will they probably be quickly? Yes. I think the main the main people who lose out on the current way of doing E3 is are like developers and the media, like press people like us, just because mm-hmm. we don't go in the same room and can talk to each other and have a reason right. to like hang out and talk and like mingle and stuff like that. But like, yeah, to the end user right. who, you know, was watching press conferences, whatever, this is way better because as we've seen the huge influx of demos, you know, like that's better for the consumer. Uh, the ESA the like Brad demos... says, makes money on a convention. So they're going to want to try, but like Sony, everyone else like lose money on it. So, well, think about it. So the media thing is really important, right? Because we're media and I am super bummed out that we can't give hands-on impressions and really try to articulate, you know, yeah. the value of these next gen games and, and have, you know, nitty gritty conversations. I, I miss that. And I think our audience enjoys that as well. But from a publisher standpoint, the people getting the most eyeballs are like single bearded guys who roll out of bed and turn on their webcam and watch the same video that you do and give their opinion on it. Like <laughs> that's getting a bazillion times more eyes than we're getting. Right. So why would you try to expensively accommodate people that have a lower number of who, who just generate less buzz? Why would you do that? Marketing budget. Yeah. So that you get the same amount of money next year that you got this year. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I have, the funny thing is I've actually been writing my fan mail this afternoon and like, there's a, it's a lot about this. Um, and yeah, I think to, I think that being spread out is bad. Um, I think if if people can coordinate to do things on a single week would be way, way better. Um, And yeah, I I think that there's got to be something, even if it's similar, more similar to Judges Week than it is to past E3s for people to come in and get hands on with a lot of things because we could knock out, you know, hands on impressions for what, like 50, 60 games during a week at E3. And, you know, even with these demos that we're, we are getting, like, it's spread out, it's weird, we're having to, like, do it on top of everything else, because we don't have that block of time, just, you know, just blocked out, it's like, that week, that's E3 week, nothing else is happening. Um, so, like, just trying to coordinate all of these different preview things. Uh, and, and it is weird to not be there, to not be able to, like, get that interaction with the people making the games to get a better understanding of what's happening. That Huber impression of just some random game he ran up to at some demo kiosk and play that I'd never heard of before. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a hole yeah. Yeah. in my soul right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think I it's the it. other thing <laughs> is that like when we're running through a big list of games, people are gonna like listen to more niche things that they might not have known about or might not think they'd be interested in just from a title. Right. Whereas, you know, like I put up, you know, impressions of like in sound mind and dirt. And it's like, well, a few people that are interested in those specific things might check them out. But the person that wouldn't know they would be interested in isn't going to click and watch a 15 minute video. That's a good point. I didn't get to do my yearly demo of Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. And my (laughs) whole life is out of whack. I, I have not been the same. 
It's like Fortnite like... coming out of early access. When that game launches, you know, the world's gonna end. Like it's yeah. a... <laughs> I won't know what to think. Um, but to, but to answer to to kind of tie this back in with the the first question of the, like which will you overtake first, IGN or Digital Foundry? Um, we have the resources to do a very specific thing, and I think that's to have conversations about games. I think that's really where we excel in, and obviously like creative stuff as well, t looping that into the whole video game discussion. But we're not tech analysts, you know, we're not like trying to cover every single industry exhaustively we're not going to every like we're, we're 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 a limited focus and so when you take away something like e3 where we can get in there and and try to have conversations and try to be as articulate as possible you know forget like sony's not being hurt like that that really hurts us for sure agreed Cool. We're coming for you, IGN. <laughs> We're coming for you. Check your rear view. Check your rear right. view. We are 4,000 miles behind you. Right. Huber, I am officially appointing you the editor in chief in charge of television show reviews. Nice. Congratulations. Just... Announcing our, our new division of ECM. <laughs> Huber reviews each episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. <laughs> wow. Every show is great. Who knew? Yeah. Yeah. They're all good. <laughs> Uh, next question comes in from James. Hi, Ally. Which, which video game critic do you particularly like, follow, and agree with? Although I get tired of his rote Jim Inquisition episodes that center around the same topics over and over, I think Jim Sterling has a very agreeable, if controversial, stance on video games, especially with his Jim Impressions videos. I also really enjoy Video Game Donkey because his videos being hilarious. He's very good at showcasing his points of view, besides his videos being hilarious. Over here in the UK, I followed future publishing magazines like Official PlayStation Magazine and Edge, as well as defunct titles like Games Master, a personal favorite, and Games TM. Uh, Damiani is currently having internet issues, but isn't he a big Donkey fan? I like, like Donkey. Donkey. I like Donkey yeah. a lot as well. Yeah, he likes Donkey. Uh, yeah. Always shout out to the to the video game nerd, like one of the mm. one of the originals, one of the best. Um, nobody like him. Uh, obviously, Ben. Greg Savin, we talked about all the time, like back in the day, GameSpot. Uh, mm -hmm. Nowadays, though, uh, still loyal to PC Gamer. Always trust their viewpoint. Really love that magazine. Um, and like one of my favorite TV, speaking of TV, one of my favorite TV critics just like left the, she used to work at Collider, this woman named Allison Keen. She used to do like my every time she do a TV review, even if I didn't watch the show, I just read it, and I just loved her viewpoint. But she like left; she doesn't do reviews anymore. Um, I somebody I like so much that I actually get mad <laughs> when I consume other stuff, and it's just not as good. I really like Matthew Matosis a lot. Um, mm. He's not the most prolific. Uh, voice, but I, I think when he puts out an opinion, it's so well considered and thorough and level headed that even if I don't strictly agree with everything that he's saying, I really appreciate the method that he uses to arrive at that point. And I think he just keeps getting better and better and better. And I, I wish there were more voices uh, like him. I really like him a lot. Shout out to Andy McNamara, who announced today's leading mm -hmm. game informer. 29 years reviewing video games. Yeah. 29 yeah, time. years. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't really watch or look at anybody in the game industry for, like, reviews or anything. Like, Fair. Because we live that life. Yeah. yeah. And I usually just ask you guys about games because there's a good <laughs> chance I'm interested that in you guys have some knowledge on it. Yeah. That's where I'm at, too. Like, I don't... You guys. Because I don't make the reviews... I don't write them here, so I can just ask you guys. And I know all of you personally well enough to like know where I would fall compared to how you right. like a thing, you know, based on our mm -hmm. taste. Oh, my favorite Ian moments. My favorite Ian moments are like when you're like, oh, hey, did you like this thing? And somebody's like, oh my God, I loved it. It was so great. And I was like, cool, I can avoid that then. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we, should put, we should have like two sides in the score. Like the score lands at the end of the review. And then it's like, which ally would like it? Which yeah. ally wouldn't? Yeah. You're like, yeah. oh, Ian yeah. likes that? Okay, great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's an 8.5, but it's not Ian even like it is what very I need to specific. Know. Is it an Ian 8.5? It's Ian, it's not even like disrespectful. It's just like... <laughs> Oh, it's I like agree. you turning us into a resource in like the funniest possible way. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of with Brad, which I don't 
I don't follow a lot of other critics, but uh, uh, it's funny that it was brought up earlier. But like, I think like Digital Foundry is kind of the one where yeah, yeah, they're you know, like yeah. this is you know somebody providing info and things that I wouldn't normally notice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I watched their their Last of Us Part Two stuff, and uh, I think like some of their Unreal stuff mm -hmm. uh, when that Unreal Engine thing came out, the PS Five stuff, and just yeah, like they they're just able to to break down things that um, I'm not able to keep up with uh, on a, a regular basis. Um, and even when they're talking about things that are not technical, like they have some really good insights at times too. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely watch Digital Foundry stuff, like Foundry Break, Fati oh. Vidya, obviously. Like I watch like games media stuff, just not criticism usually. I know it's been around forever, but I, I haven't started watching Boundary Break until recently. And what a fantastic idea. It's chill, man. For a They're series. Good. And he just seems like the most like good natured soul in the world. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Tim Geddes. Kind of funny. Oh, kind of funny just in general. They, they just <laughs> announced to, they're going to do Nolan in review and Ghibli in review. And I, I love that <laughs> series when they just go mm. everything. Um, Apparently, Christopher Nolan doesn't allow chairs. Yeah, they they I'm countered. That going around. He countered and he said, "I do allow chairs, but I don't allow cell phones or smoking." Uh, nice. He said the cell phone thing has, has been a constant battle, but smoking, no, no, like period, like you cannot smoke on Nolan's set. I imagine most you know most sets are, you know are, are safe yeah. like that, but uh, yeah, I, that was probably a weird thing for him to wake up to. Like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> And of no course, everybody. Shit. I saw a funny tweet where they somebody like digitally took all the chairs out of his movie. So they had yeah. like they had like Batman and Dark Knight when he's like jamming the door shut to beat up Joker, and he's, there's nothing there. You know, it's like <laughs> it's true. None of his movies have chairs. All these characters just sitting on nothing. <laughs> Floating. Uh, our next question comes in from Jeremy. Hey, I was I just watched your Infinity War and Endgame upon. I think he means spoiler modes upon the deep dives yeah. of the Avengers game. And it got me thinking, what lessons do you think Square Enix could learn from the success of the MCU? I suppose these could also apply to Insomniac Spider-Man games as well, but I don't think people are as worried about Spider-Man Miles Morales. I'll tell you what Stay would have safe. been the, the most hype of all time, but they couldn't do it. And it would, ta would have taken years. You do individual games and yep. then you culminate with the Avengers. Right. And then there's just so much hype. You prove yourself, you do a sick Iron Man game. That sounds like sick exhausting. whatever. Yeah. yeah that but, sounds like a lot. But, I think that's what DC should have done. But that's yeah. that's <laughs> potentially what DC is doing with the Suicide Squad game. If it pulls in the Arkham universe, they could like mm. you know, if Batman shows up in that, like from the Arkham universe, they kinda have that it's obviously not on that level, but I don't know. Build up to it. I'm really curious to see how that Avengers game shakes out. I just mm -hmm. can't. Every time I watch anything from it, like I, I have this like innate reaction of just my eyes glazing over, and it's like, wait, no, no, pay attention. Oh. <laughs> I just... think bringing in Miss Marvel was probably the smartest thing they've done so far. It's like yeah. bring in a, a new character who we have not associated with at all in the MCU, and have mm -hmm. her be the one that kind of extends her passion to. Like, I think all of us are going to be rolling our eyes going into that game, those of us that choose to actually spend time with it. And I think she's going to kind of, we're going to be like, <coughs> excuse me, begrudgingly like, okay. Yeah. All right, come on. True. I like these characters too. All right. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, they, I think so many of the decisions that they made, it's like too late. <laughs> it's just like too late to not. Um, I, I, even like photorealism might not have been the, the way to go. No, yeah, maybe not. It's just like, I look at Thor and it's like, ah, Thor's weird. And that's like, but what do you, how do you unweird this Thor? I don't know, you know, like, yeah. cause this is, if we hadn't had the MCU, it'd be like, oh, that's cool. It's a good representation of what he's like in the comics. Yeah, Max actually had a really good <sighs> uh, point about that, where he's like, you, you look at the footage of this game and everything is like either dark or a gray sky and it's just so muted. And uh, he compared it to just, just visually the style of like Ultimate Alliance 3 and how it kind of captured the excitement and energy of comics and even something like Spider-Man being a very vibrant game despite going for a more realistic look. And I thought that was a very good point. The first time I saw Spider-Man though, the cutscenes, I was like, Ugh, these characters look weird. I mean, like by the time I was actually like into the story, I'm like, I love this, it's great. Mm. But it's tough. It reminds me of the last two uh, Tomb Raider games, like looked great, great action. You know, it just was like, I'm not sure why I should be excited. <laughs> I'm right. sure these games are fun, but it's like the marketing, that. I'm like, because eh. it just kind of, you know, 
like leans so heavily on like Laura, you love her, go buy the game. And you're more like, need a little more. It's like mm -hmm. she's mad this time. And it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, like, it's kind of what they're doing at the MCU. They're like, Hulk, you love him. And it's like, I need more. Like, yeah, it's Man like Banner uh, and Stark, they argue. It's like, <laughs> it's like Kyle always said, like, you know, comedy is so hard in video games, and the MCU is light, it's fun, it's the characters are endearing. Like, when they get into a big battle it you you are invested in the characters like surviving through the battle at least i am yeah and like everything about the game has just been like dark mm -hmm. action and like you were saying jones like item you know, level just, yeah just item you know gear and it's like yeah, oh, america's Dead. Yeah, it's like I want <laughs> I, I want some slower moments. I want like 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 Insomniac Spider Man. People keep comparing this to Spider Man and Batman and stuff. And it's like in Spider Man, you get to be Peter Parker a little bit. And you get those cutscenes or you get the cutscenes, and it's like Aunt May is amazing in that game. And what? you just you care more. You're invested in the characters rather than the fighting and the gear. To to bounce off that and to uh, you know tackle the the question here, I think something that is really a huge strength of the MCU is how many different voices it can have when it's at its best, right? You can have something like uh, Winter Soldier, right? Which is the polar opposite of something like Thor Ragnarok. But both kind of add and build up this shared uh -huh. world because they're, they're, they're allowing for those differences in style. And I think something that's great about Spider-Man, something that I love so much about it as a game, is it, it has that insomniac feel to it. It, it has that insomniac voice and they're taking that voice and they're taking all the lessons that they've learned and, and running it through the Spider-Man thing. Like with Avengers, I don't get a sense that like, ah, this is a crystal dynamics game or like, this is, this is like the perspective they're trying to have on these characters that everybody loves. Like it, I just don't, it doesn't feel as um, purposeful yet. And of course, you know, I haven't had hands time, hands on time. You know, I might play it and love it and find that voice, but I so far I haven't been able to find it. Divisive game already, for sure. But but you know, it's it's okay to criticize this game. It's okay to like it, but at the same time, Square Enix and Marvel are two of the biggest companies in the industry. You know, in in film and in video games. So. I think the the higher expectations and the higher criticism of that is totally okay. And was yeah. Spider-Man the first Spider-Man game of this generation? Was that like the Spider-Man game? Like, did we get? Because I know the 360 had just like 50 of them, but like, <laughs> I think I think we were just so hungry for Spider-Man. It was like, yes, it's the time, and this is the developer. Oh my <laughs> god! Where it's like we got Lego Adventures, we got Ultimate Alliance, you know, plus the MCU. It's like you're just tired, you know. It's like you just mm -hmm. got to do something you really have to shake it up and like yeah. even even being like the avengers have broken up it's like that was civil war what else you got <laughs> you know yeah. there's just not it's like tony has long hair it's, it's the only thing i can think of it's you like... know <laughs> you know what they could have done is is x-men with in there somehow like if one x-men was in this game i think that would like i know we just got marvel ultimate alliance but if you had like wolverine showcasing or or something like Dark Phoenix, I don't know. They, they have Jean Grey. <laughs> they ha they have their trailer right, and just like a five second stinger at the end, you see Wolverine just full on eviscerate somebody. Like blood is just <laughs> flying at the screen. You're like, wait, what? Like pause that. Hold on. Yeah, you know, Hulk Hulk launching him like what we yeah. always wanted in the movie. Just. I think that's too much, man. Like, especially yeah. if they're gonna do more games, like you don't need to use the X-Men yet. I'm already worried about there being too many characters in this game and therefore no character feeling that great. Everything it's gonna feel like more quantity over quality to me. Yeah. And I think if you had more characters than that, it's gonna be even worse. Yeah, they I think they confirmed today actually I saw there's just the just the six characters. Yeah, that's a lot of characters, man. Yeah. To like make them all fun and like yeah. play different. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That is like awesome. Spider Man works really well because it's they focus just on Spider Man. That's True. why it feels so True. good to be Spider Man. The zipping. And like you can kind of see it from what we're seeing, the Avengers. Like it looks like okay, I guess. I will say though that like after playing two X, X Men Legends and now three Ultimate Alliances and like 
any flying character just hovers. That's like the best you can do. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm just going to float at five feet. And then that's all I'm going to do at every level. Like I asked them at E3 and I was like, please tell me I can like go on top of a building or something, you know, please just like, just open up the in- in- areas a little bit more. Cause I didn't really see that in the trailer. And they said they were going to, and they, I actually could tell from the, the gameplay. There was like one shot where like Iron Man was like, up in the air and like all the way down on the ground you could see hulk just pick up a guy and chuck it up and so it's like that's pretty cool like, yeah yeah if if like we're all streaming it and we're just like okay and like you know uh somebody is is uh thor and we're just like okay blood come up where's blood and it's like oh it's way over there <laughs> and just like mm-hmm. oh, come on and then shh, comes flying down like that could be fun i can't wait different i guess i can't wait for easy allies to give it a 9.5 and hey, like I'm somebody it, just so. somebody just plays, I want to. somebody just plays this footage with like the curb your enthusiasm music over <laughs> it. <laughs> we will see. Uh our next question. It'll be a sick group stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah it will be a sick group stream. <laughs> yep. Maybe. Our next question comes in from Maybe. not Jack. Gents, what are the specific things you'd you need to see from the July Microsoft conference to grade it in A? Are those things in line with what we saw from the Sony conference? Key elements I think about our games coming out this year, gameplay demos, and great reveal moments. Thanks as always, not Jack. Play Halo Infinite live. Live. <laughs> that's and, a big ask, dude. Yeah. Anything it, alive right now? That's it. That's an A for me. I agree. That, I that's agree something no one's done. That's, I think that's, you that's, need that's... to see it played. I don't know if live on a stream is. Live stream. Let's go. Everyone, everyone streams games live every day. Sure. It's not a big deal. Stream that shit live. <laughs> I need to see more than just Halo being there to give it an A. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I need to see something really crazy on and unexpected from them. JRPG, like, Brad. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like obviously I'd be super excited with whatever fable if it shows up, but Ooh. Well they got Obsidian now. Yeah. Damn. I don't I don't know if Obsidian's ready to show off something big yet. Might be a little too early still. Sure. But, but- I just if they need something really unexpected that you wouldn't associate with them, I guess. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to feeling and momentum. Like a lot of Microsoft stuff that I've seen recently is like, cool, yeah, I can wait on that. Like that that's to to get an A, it's like, oh man, it's painful that I can't experience this right now. This seems so exciting, so new, mm-hmm. so fresh. I just want to talk about it. You know, it's it's. I think cultivating that energy and you know, not Jack. I think you you nailed a lot of it, um, but I think for a new generation, you kind of want to get the sensation that you know, big company is pulling out all the stops. Yeah. No stone is stone is being left unturned. Dreams are coming true. You know, you're, you're investing hundreds of dollars in this new machine and you want to feel like, oh man, the next you know, seven years or whatever it is, if, it, if, it, if the beginning is this good, imagine where we'll go. I think you just kind of need to to feel like you're lit up. I, I think just, mm-hmm. I, I kind of get what you're saying, Brad. Um, there have been a lot of times with the Microsoft conferences where it's like, yeah, neat. Uh, <laughs> Forza looks cool. Halo looks cool. Gears looks cool. I feel like we've been kind of riding that train for a long time. Or, like, something looks really awesome, like Sea of Thieves. But then, you know, we have, like, a slew of games where it's like they're kind of underdeveloped at the beginning. And so just something that seems like it's going to give you a lot immediately and feels fresh. Yeah. Like, I'm just thinking how crazy, like, how crazy it be if they're just, like, we're doing the next Silent Hill, and yeah. it's like only on Microsoft or something like that. Just something right. totally unexpected. I feel Spencer am writing the script yes. for the new ah. Silent Hill again. <laughs> I got tired of waiting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I also would appreciate. I, I remember like after uh, and just getting ready for the podcast. Like after the the big Sony thing, I had to kind of do the math. I'm like, what's coming out in 2022? What's coming out in 2021? What hasn't been release dated yet? And then like I could finally whittle it down to like, ah, this is what we're playing this Christmas. Mm-hmm. And it'd be nice if like they said that. If like they did like some kind of wrap up at the end, and they were like, to clarify, when the Xbox Series X launches, these are the games. You know. Yeah. And if they like yeah. don't do that and kind of patch them around, that's like, what are you scared? Or are you not? Like, do you think it? You're like gonna fool us with what the launch lineup is? Like, the more open they are with really showing that, it, that to me it'll feel the more like they're really proud of of their offerings. But it's just like so many launch lineups have been underwhelming. So mm-hmm. I don't know. So many of the most exciting. Like, I, I do not claim to know anything about how this team works or how much time it would take to make that game. But like, I'm a little surprised 
horizons like that far down the road it's like ooh, okay like i kind of was ready for that i thought we were going to get that sooner but what is it 2021 yeah and not even like we don't know we don't know when in 2021 it's just yeah. like oh you know um so i think it looks great i think it will be great but uh could be like march yeah could be maybe Lucky. first one was kind of around there i could see horizon 2 taking a lot of time yeah, like I'm thinking that about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That doesn't feel. That could take a long time. Yeah. I hope they bring Perfect Dark back. Mm -hmm. Perfect Dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I think they need to too, like yeah. start showing receipts on all of those uh, those developers they bought. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, Been we need Hellblade to see. Too. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, you know, like maybe too early for Obsidian, but I like, I, I, I don't think it's too early for Obsidian to show something. You know, yeah. even if it's not fully formed gameplay yet. Uh, Ben, you know what I think would be sick if they brought KI back. I think that yeah. would do a lot, mm -hmm. actually. I was just thinking about KI, and like I am not a KI player, uh, but I think just in terms of excitement and like starting mm -hmm. off the generation, them bringing back KI and it looking as good as it did, like that there was that was that was exciting and that was awesome and it felt like it was really bringing something new to the table. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, a similar announcement like that. And I, I agree, Blood. I think, obviously, it may still be very early goings for a lot of these developers. But I think even then just getting out there and saying, like, this is where we're at right now. You know, we've got a long way to go, but this is where we're at would do a lot. And Maybe I think, sure. you know, Double Fine being part of that, too. Like, they're pretty good at managing multiple unique projects um, that... Yeah, I, I think that we could very easily, you know, it's been a year since the Double Fine uh, acquisition. Right. So, like, definitely, I think they could be ready to show something pretty crazy. Dude, Ben. Yeah. You're talking about, like, fresh and needing to play it right now. Mm -hmm. And that, it made me think so hardly of Dead Rising 1. Oh, yeah, man. When that mm -hmm. came out, you had it to was play it. fresh, and you had to play you it, had to play it right it. then. You yep. had, there was no missing it. It was so new, it was so an event. unique. Yep. It was a freaking event. Yeah. Something like that. Not not like Dead Rising, but like, like you were saying, fresh, and you got to play it now. Yeah, I mean, Dead, Dead Rising... <laughs> wasn't a launch game but it was you know yeah, very close. early on it was very early yeah. on in the, the the console's life cycle and hubert that's such a a brilliant example because i remember playing it at a friend's place and we just like knowing nothing about it and just getting lost in how much freedom we had and just the humor the style exactly that 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 energy of like okay this is mm -hmm. a this is a next generation game i i have to play more of this and it's so tragic thinking about yeah. like let's the, not go there let's not go there. the dumpster fire <laughs> no. that that series is in right now yeah. <laughs> holy shit Damn just it. completely squandered into oblivion like Damn oh it. my god <laughs> oh it's upsetting it is upsetting what's in worse shape dead rising or dead island <laughs> okay but dead island was never in like yeah. amazing shape totally. right <laughs> Was it? Dead Rising no. One. I liked it though. I I, yeah, I liked it Good too. Good trailers. Oh Good yeah. Trailers. <laughs> the first two or whatever. Damiani, yeah. we're, we're saying what uh, would give the Xbox conference next month an A in our eyes. Uh, <clears throat> new, new Fable, New Killer Instinct, New Perfect Dark, and uh, Banjo-Kazooie platformer. From Rare. Two, you want Rare doing both Perfect Dark and Banjo? I mean, Rare does have to be doing Perfect Dark, actually. So if you don't get all of those things, is it not an A? <laughs> yeah, we'll get an A, we'll get an a plus. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I want to bring up Fable, because I actually think Fable is really kind of the perfect candidate for Next Gen, where I think there's been enough time um, yes. and that the series is open-ended enough that you could do a lot of creative things with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think it is something that could flex next gen technology in a pretty mm. convincing way. Like it just seems like this beautiful canvas where you can kind of do whatever you want, but you also have the name recognition. Yeah. And that, I, that, that yeah. was that was one of the heartbreaking things about Fable Legends was like the like fabric in that game was incredible. You know, like yeah. the capes and like mm. you know just the environments look really great. And like I just I'm so in love with that storybook aesthetic. 
and it's like we get kind of indie games every now and then that are a couple hours long that use that but just like a big meaty you know kind of borderline cartoony fairy book you know fairy tale style you know it's just there's just not a lot of games like that um and i love big dramatic rpgs but uh um, just kind of some fun action thing, very personalized, mm-hmm. really gives you a lot of agency and where you want to take the story. You see the whole world changing around you. Like, right. I'm ready. Um, our next thing comes in from Mike Hook. He just says, hi. What's up, Mike? Hey. Hi. Hey. You can do us, Hook. Uh, next one comes in from Kingsley. Hey, Ben Sama and Alice. What is your most anticipated game coming going forward? Mine by a mile is Elden Ring in all caps. Mm. We know so little about it, and yet Elden Ring subreddit has been busy making bosses and lore. Oh, that's awesome. Of which there are none, and the community just keeps having discussions about this non existing lore, armor sets, locations, and bosses and NPCs. That is so wholesome. Uh, Looking yeah. forward to your replies. In the wide world, wise words of Bradley Ellis, bow before Miyazaki. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I would say. Like, uh, this is hard because it's cyberpunk. Yeah, totally. By so far, but I'm just nervous about my setup playing that game. That like tech, the tech, you know. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm worried about playing a compromised version of cyberpunk because it seems to be pushing tech so far. So, like, it it is cyberpunk, but I'm all, there's also this like nervous energy that I have for kind of like missing FOMO, I guess, missing out on the best version of the game. Better get on I'll that just, Stadia humor. Yeah. I'll just <laughs> send you like, years ago. <laughs> I'll send you little videos of like yeah, yeah. it running perfectly. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, please do, please you, do. You like seriously. text message him like, okay, what choice do you want to make? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Huber, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in a similar boat where I uh, was like, uh, it's time to start upgrading PC. Yeah, yeah. Nervous about like I, I don't want to I don't want to do a full brand new machine, but like how much of my stuff still going to be compatible? Every big uh, C project right game bloody upgrade your rig four. <laughs> <laughs> you got your rig for Witcher three, didn't you? No. No. Oh. I'm pretty Just sure you did. did. Yeah. This is our head cannon. It's this is sworn blood gun. This is right, right, right. Yeah, history. he played on like PS4, <laughs> then he got the PC later. I think the now thing that Cyberpunk's coming out, he's ready to go again. The thing that annoys me is I was actually talking to some people about upgrading my PC because I want to do the same, and they're like, "Okay, but just wait. There's some new stuff right around the corner." It's like that's <laughs> ah, it's always the case. Like yeah, you, right. you always feel like you're you're just about to miss out on something. Um, but my you know, I love t- that because then everything gets cheaper. I always well, buy like one tier below because mm. when the new shit comes out, all this other stuff is so much cheaper. Bang for your buck. I'm trying to get not, like, this monitor and it's sold out everywhere and it's like oh. years old. Um, I don't know. I think I think times are just weird. But um, my most anticipated game is Shin Megami Tensei Five. My most anticipated game that is coming out <laughs> is Cyberpunk. For sure. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so deep. I always forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Man. It was a good looking apartment that we saw like four and a half years ago. <laughs> or a uh, school or whatever. I have it was. four? Is that unfair? No, no. do it. Man. I got, I got another one. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Smoke. I got Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. Yes. Yeah. Elden Ring. Yeah. Oh. Demon Souls and Breath of the Wild 2. Nice. Yeah. Oh, Three right. picks. I shared two of those, and you could probably guess which two. Yeah, Zelda <laughs> and Final Demon Fantasy. Souls. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> shout out to Miles Morales. Yeah, that's Souls gonna be such a good. I'm just kidding. Oh, on, yeah. on Christmas uh, playing that. Yeah, like, that's gonna um, be a feel good. That's gonna be vibes. Multiple will... times I've said to my wife, like, you and I are gonna play a new Ratchet and Clank game mm. on a PS5. <laughs> like the day the PS5 comes out, we're gonna be sitting there playing Ratchet and Clank together. How jolly is that? I, I am my, so excited by that idea. My hope is on the day it comes out, I'll be playing that Demon Souls. But who yeah. knows when that comes out? If that's true, Ratchet might have to wait. Yeah, Ratchet's gonna have to wait. Yeah, gonna have to wait. <laughs> Everyone's gonna have to wait. Yeah, sorry. Also, I didn't say Resident Evil Seven because that's Resident Evil Eight. We already have Resident Evil Seven. Resident Evil Eight because yeah. that transcends desire that is that is mm-hmm. oh yeah, man you know. i think i might be looking yeah. forward to resident evil 8 more than cyberpunk <laughs> Ooh. yeah 
I think I really yes. Yeah, it yes. looked really good. This looked enemy. The wolf enemies just make me think oh, it's gonna yeah. be really different. And Dude, punish Chris like the most yeah. punished Chris. Hell yeah! <laughs> Someone brought up a uh, silver bullets, dude. What if you have silver <laughs> oh, bullets? Where is yeah. it? Yeah. Dude, I guarantee it. Yo, that's gonna be like the economy in that game is silver. silver either you either buy upgrades or you Metro. buy the bullets you need to survive. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like <laughs> you like steal family heirlooms from houses <laughs> and like melt them down. <laughs> But like we had that one the merchant like the, from four is a smelter now, and he's like, yeah. What are we melting? <laughs> yeah. It's like his, his offspring, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the like the one a werewolf attack we see in it is he reaches through the, the, the ceiling and grabs you and grabs the other guy. And it kind of reminds me of the, the greenhouse fight from seven. It'd be interesting. Mm. There's just a lot of that, you know, just a lot of mm. like, there's, you know, like look out for walls look out for the floor look out for ceilings look out Birkin for too slamming just, yeah they can constantly cut and nemesis you know just like yeah. you know grappling his way up onto ledges and stuff wasn't it like four days ago or something it was like two in the morning and you just posted a picture without any comment of birkin i think that in slack i think that happened well, what if i told you that that's like happened like a hundred times yeah specifically <laughs> of birkin pictures uh Shout out to Baldur's Gate 3 as well. I really yeah, I really, yeah, I, I really believe in that game. And I'm also going to say, I'm going to add, because of the recent hire, taking a Call of Duty lead designer, I'm going to say Metroid Prime 4. Oh. Uh, the, the team that they are assembling there uh, seems like some pretty good talent. I haven't seen mm. anything, but uh, they, they have a lot of expertise in FPS stuff, so I'm uh, thinking that might end up being good. Yeah, looking forward to that. Breath of the Wild 2, obviously. Demon's Souls is like my most my most anticipated realistic game that's actually happening. Uh, Cyberpunk, I'm so, so excited for, but also really cautious because I didn't like Witcher 3. So mm. I'm nervous, but excited uh, for that. I think my and excitement... Ring, obviously. My excitement for Cyberpunk, Ian... To, to maybe help you out there is even if I don't like it, I think it'll be fascinating. Oh yeah. Sure. Well, like, I like, think it'll be a really be interesting so much, game. There's going to be so much that you can do. My hope is that like, if there's, a, if there's one thing you don't like, you've got six other options of doing it that you would like, you right, know, like right. that's my hope that it really is that open, but I don't know. Also Gloomwood looks sick. Also really, really excited about whatever story updates we're getting to GTA 5 on PS5. I think that's going to be... <laughs> for that story fourth, updates? For that fourth playthrough, it's really going to make that special. I'm going to... We'd lose in Hoover. Oh, well. <laughs> He's out. Uh -huh. what's, what's, what's even better than first person? We had third person, the PS4, we had first person. It's going to be an RTS in, on PS5. Mm. Yeah. I, I hope... This is not going to happen, but I hope... <laughs> The the next gen version of Grand Theft Auto Five is somehow like the worst performing one. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> Frame rate is <laughs> god awful. Yeah. That would be very funny. Okay, uh, next question comes in from Asbo Zaprooter. Good afternoon, allies. I hope you're all keeping cool as we wade knee deep into the summer. Last month, you all gave me your earliest memories of Michael Damiani. We learned that he's a professional, likes Zelda and Cats, not the musical, and might be a robot. This month, I'm hoping for equally shocking insights as I ask you for your earliest memories and or impressions of Bradley Ellis. Oh shit. <laughs> Here we go again. Here yeah. we go again. I've got one. I think I've told this story before, but... Um, Brad, so Brad, you know, I didn't know him. He's just Huber's friend. Came into the office. Um, didn't, I don't think we, like, talked or gelled immediately or anything. But I just remember the thing that broke the ice is we just started talking about Final Fantasy one day. And mm -hmm. I think both of us finding out that we were both giant Final Fantasy fans, like, that was it. Like, everything was immediately cool. Um, and it's been super chill ever since. Also... Very early memory. Uh, Damiani was remotely reviewing Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and needed us to capture. And Brad and I played together with him, and that was that was oh, yeah. very jolly. Yeah. Brad scared me a little bit because <laughs> everybody that I worked with was hired by like someone else. Like I remember, like I said before, that like I had a had a say at like who I thought we should pick when we like we hired bloodworth we hired damiani but like 
Brad like was brought in under my watch. Like I was like, I was the one in charge, like when we brought Brad in. And so there were a lot of, there's this kind of attitude when we were at Defy where I'm just like, well, these are all, these are the people we just wound up with. You know, these are the people that either weren't let go or still wanted to stick around. And uh, I, I, my dad always said this, Brad, and uh, like his, his partners would always say this too, that like, you know, it's never a bad time to ask for a raise. It doesn't hurt. Just go mm -hmm. in and say, you know, you're worth it. Like, you know, you're working hard. And there was just nothing I could do about it. But you, like, I respected that so much that, like, I think about two or three times a year, you would just come to my office and be like, it's time. And I'm like, I agree. <laughs> there's nothing. Yeah. There's not much I can do. But uh, you, you respected the work that you did. And uh, you knew you were worth it. So It's a hard worker. Man, I remember the first time I saw Brad, uh, Brad got this vibe. I felt like that he, and it, just judging by, like, I hate judging by appearance, but felt like he was like way too cool to be with us <laughs> no it's true uh, this dude is like looking at him he's like, he's like he probably thinks i go he's probably in his head going man these dudes uh, are nerds I always, you are all nerds and I was i've like, been told oh. that my entire life man it's like what the hell dude <laughs> I, was just like, I was like oh man this dude probably like it's like geez these guys are losers i was like oh no but uh, that, uh then like you started talking with me and like you showed like you were like showing so much interest and stuff. I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, this dude's pretty awesome. So I was like, yes. Like, and then uh, talking about, I just remember we had one conversation. You were asking me like Zelda stuff, and I was like, okay, yes, you, you're cool. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also like your like enthusiasm. You just like always wanted to like help out or like just talk to us about what we were doing and stuff. And it was real. It was you did it in a way that was like really like didn't seem like it was like too like oh, i'm just like pestering you it came across as you were like dude the, the, like it was very down to earth and realistic and it was kind of nice uh i don't know how i don't know how you like pull that off because like most every person who i think comes off like they just don't they, i think they just sort of like scared or intimidating being like an intern or something and so at first they're either really shy and you have to like kind of like talk to them like mm -hmm. you have to go to them or they come to you they're like this like way too over eager and you like didn't have that at all so like, you seemed like you could fit into any situation be calm cool and collective basically mm. so you seemed like way more mature than like in, like most of the people i like work with, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. fair fair uh, don and I, back at game trailers don and i were always like apart from everyone else uh, in the defy days and like in the gt days at viacom like the editors it was just a whole other thing and like interns would show up and leave and we wouldn't ever really like you know so like new new people would kind of come and go in the viacom days and brad being like one of the first hires once we were like in that weird period of like moving from viacom to defy or whatever like we didn't get to know i feel like i didn't get to know brad super well right off the bat mm -hmm. but like a weird for a weird early memory that I have is one of the first times you were on Final Bossman. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. the first time you'd ever acted. Yeah. Uh, and so Bossman and I were like trying to direct you and stuff, and you were like, "Look, I've never done this. <laughs> like, I don't know." Yeah, it was a weird situation. Kyle was being like strangely antagonistic for some reason. <laughs> I was like, dude, I've never like done this before. I'm just trying. Yeah. To he was not. He was not nurturing in a good way or anything yeah. or help or helpful at all. He was actually just kind of a dick to me. I'll never yeah. forget that. I remember I remember <laughs> Kyle. I remember Kyle eventually just being like, just say this. Just yeah. do this right after this. Like he didn't understand. He was not used to working with people who didn't do that kind of thing right, or used to being right. on camera. So he's like, Oh, just do it. Just do it. And I was like, and I was like thinking to myself, I was like, you know, Brad's clearly very nervous. Like he's yeah. never acted before. He barely knows either of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, you've come a long way, yeah. like in all our dumb skits over the years, too. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. Just Kyle, like, like waving while. paper at your face. Yeah. 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 Be like, wrong time, Brad. Kyle was an awesome person. That's just the only time I ever rem remember being mad at Kyle. <laughs> that, that definitely stuck in my memory. Uh, I've known Brad my whole life, so... Kindergarten, I think? Yeah, yeah, dude. So, I don't know, like, first... I don't have, like, a first memory, but obviously my favorite memories are just, like, how much we gamed growing yeah. up. Just nonstop, after school, coming to my house or his house, playing freaking 
Goldeneye, Smash, Mario Kart, like every game. Yeah, the living room, dude. All day, every day. And then uh, once we got a little older, like high school days, I used to love. Because Brad had the sick setup where he had like his TV and then his computer right there in the back of his house where he is right now. So, yeah. so then uh, one of us would be like playing WoW or StarCraft or something. Usually usually World of Warcraft, like grinding it out. Mm-hmm. And then the other one would be playing like, I don't know, a Lament of Innocence comes to my mind. There's some <laughs> crazy Brad shit. Yeah. <laughs> like that happened. Yeah, you and Matt used to play WoW together a lot. Yeah. Huber, I remember... I think the first time you and Brad and I and like other allies played smash together and like, I think Brad beat you and you just said with such heaviness story of my life. And that is, (laughs) that is, yeah, that is stuck with me (laughs) forever losing in smash golden. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I will admit defeat on golden. Any day. You find like go to the afterlife and they're like, hey, so welcome, welcome to heaven. You can go back and revisit any moment that you would like to. And I'm like, I want to go see Michael Huber meet Brad Ellis in preschool. I'm like, what? Who? <laughs> like, you don't want to see parts of your life? Like, nope. They always say, I'm an it's Brad. My name's Mike. <laughs> like building oh. Lincoln logs or something. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Probably. It's probably like that. So pure. Our next question comes in from Ulf. Hi, allies. Uh, what are the perfect Game Pass games for you? Games that you're not sure you'll like, so you don't want to spend money on, but if it was free, you'd give it a shot. Ace Combat 7 was that for me. Nice. What's Anything that? on Game Pass is great. <laughs> yeah, somebody pointed out that like downhill jam. The, downhill the bike, bike game? Yeah. yeah, that that's oh. on Game Pass. And so. Lonely Mountains Downhill? Yeah. That's somebody pointed out that game. that's on Game I like Pass. Game. And so I have not grabbed it on there yet, but uh, it's I was on looking Switch at, as well. Um, but it's I got the Game Pass, so it's like, oh ready to go i think game pass is good for me for games that i i bounced off originally for one reason or another and i'm like you know i since it's free i'll give it another shot like oh elder scrolls online on game pass okay <laughs> i'll dip back in or like you know your no man's skies your fallout 76 is where it's like maybe i didn't have a great experience or whatever but it'd be a good reason it just reminds me that they exist or something yeah, for me, it's like the the B the B tier, and I and I love the B tier games, but like sometimes it does hurt to spend full price on a Swimming in Seven. Hmm. So when like 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 Jones, I'm waiting for like Greedfall for Games Pass. <laughs> like that is the one, dude. That is the one I want. I want to play it so bad, but I don't want to pay yep. full price mm-hmm. for it. Smart. Smart. <laughs> I'm very Dude. glad I got Outer Wild, Outer Worlds mm. on Game Pass on PC. But to me, like the ultimate Game Pass game now, No Man's Sky is a good one, and I think Sea oh. of Thieves. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. yeah. it's yeah. like no, no downside. Like just yes. try Sea of Thieves out with your buddies. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Sea of Thieves is a very good example. I feel like for this group, Gears of War Five is like a good Games Pass one. Ooh. Sure. Because like <laughs> not a lot of people bought it, but it's on Games Pass, so they'll give it a spin. They'll rev up their Lancer. Yeah. I got I got Portal Bridge Constructor oh, right. from PC Game Pass. <laughs> I would never have bought that otherwise. It's Hollow cute. Hollow Knight it's is fun. on Games Pass right now. God damn. Whoa. You know what? Just buy that one. Yeah, yeah. buy that. Yeah. Just like, buy that one. If you have like if you're like intimidated by the game, now you can just try it. And then try you'll buy it, it. Then buy it. I've got I've got like Speaking of like Brad's like Kyle trauma, I've got Kyle trauma from pluralizing games pass. He like drilled that out of me in the podcast. So I'm always very cautious to be game pass, which makes <laughs> less sense. It should be games pass. It's sing- it's singular game pass. It's game yeah. pass. It's stupid. Games. I think I've been saying games pass. You've all too. been saying games pass. We all <laughs> do because it pass. should be games pass. It's not Who just cares? one game. game pass. Kyle <laughs> cared and it traumatized me. Well, he's not gone now. Boat. Summer game. <laughs> not pass. high on my list of concerns. Yeah. Yeah, I guess for me it just becomes like this like backup utilitarian thing. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, we were, we're playing yeah something on group stream or something. It's like, oh, it's on Game Pass. Great, <laughs> because I've got just the giant list it's of games. Games Pass, Bloodroot. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. Um. But yeah, so I just like 
yeah, it's just like one of those things where it's like, oh, the necessities there. Oh, I already have it. Great. Don't have to worry about the logistics of trying to get it. I wish there were a game called The Necessity. <laughs> the necessity. And it's a game about nothing. Nothing Whoa. is necessary. Whoa. Uh, Whoa, dude. Nothing Whoa. is true. Whoa. Everything is permitted. Whoa, dude. Whoa, Ezio. Whoa, Whoa. Whoa. dude. <laughs> Whoa. Dude. You want to take out that outpost? Uh, I already did, bro. There, there's 30 more. <laughs> Damn it. No, I kid. That's some bullshit. Uh, Blood, you didn't get to speak about Brad. Do you want to say something? Oh, no. I'm terrible about these. This is we've learned from the past. Like, I don't have any memory. This is great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't have a specific story. So, I, um, I just remember Brad always being, you know, super chill and uh, willing to jump into whatever nonsense we had for him because that's kind of what we need. <laughs> that was my job, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're in charge of nonsense. Oh, and, and plus, it, you know, it's kind of hard because, like, you weren't coming up every day. Mm -hmm. You're like, what, two days a week or something oh, like God, that? Oh, that's right. Or Yeah. Yeah. I, to this day, I still laugh at it. Not to, like, drag this back out, but anytime Huber or Brad say the name Grumbomb, I laugh. Like, at, at least internally. Like, oh, I remember that one thing Grumbomb did, and it's just like... Somebody asked on Twitch the other day, when are we getting a Grumbomb emote? <laughs> oh, shit. Can we have a Grumbomb emote? <laughs> they don't even know what he looks like. <laughs> they will. Gr Grumbomb, Grumbomb has become Grumbom. like really this, be this star yeah, exactly. legend yeah, yeah. with a perfect name. <laughs> I picture him as kind of like, uh, like that big fuzzy purple uh, Muppet from McDonald's. Grimace? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The picture him as Grimace. <laughs> we should tell that's him my favorite. Oh, that's my yeah. favorite. Infinity War line. Hey, Grimace. Uh, yeah. Um, moving on. Our next question is from Corey. Congrats. Easy has been accepted to Hogwarts. Oh, no. But oh, the no. catch is you oh, have no. to be an anime character. What anime character would you go to Hogwarts? What? And what crazy stuff what? would you get into? Whoa, that took what a turn. What the hell is this an question? Anime character? I'm Who just the, the messenger. <laughs> Also need an anime character you're friends with. Uh, can we like, can we be at like the Persona High School instead? Yeah, we decline the invitation. <laughs> Which Persona? They're all they're all different five, high schools. Five, five, okay. five, five, five. Okay. Wait, you don't want to go to Hogwarts? You want to go to normal high school? Yeah. We're going to Bobaton. Dude, I'm going to Hogwarts, <laughs> man. I'm going to some magic, dude. Okay, what what anime character would you go into Hogwarts as? <laughs> Uh, I'd just be guts in Hogwarts. <laughs> hmm. Joseph Joe Star clearly. That's a oh, great one, Jones. That's a great one, Jones. Yep. I feel like Lupin the Third would get into another some, great one. Yeah, mm. some fun hijinks. Or Faye Valentine, she'd always be like getting caught doing whatever. Light Yagami. Dude, ace in all those tests. Along those lines, I think L would be really fun and mm -hmm. Hogwarts. Shit, man. Now I'm picturing Tetsuo or one of those guys, Kaneda, and like they're in like they they mess up with the polyjuice potion. He's like, <laughs> Kaneda. That's one. Tetsuo. I'm gonna go to Hogwarts as Raditz. That's where. I, that's who I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be fucking Raditz. Raditz, dude. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was trying to think. Um. Alphonse Elric is doing in the armor, right? Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> go. Go with that. That's nice. that's some some magical crossover right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Huber, yeah, you could be a Rochimaru. Damn it. <laughs> I was thinking that. Yo, Rochimaru at that school. Damn. Be a good teacher. He would take it over. He'd laugh man. at Snape. Yeah. Like, what? Who are you? Get out of here. Mm -hmm. You're not doing this right. Lane from Serial Experiments. Lane would be <laughs> like some depressing ass Hogwarts yeah. version. <laughs> um, any, anyone out. you want to be friends with or would you betray for dark wizard magic? Oh. 
Dude, if I'm going in as Orochi Mario, man, like, betray everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to Mitsuki. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 character. If, if whoever is Guts, then uh, Griffith would have to be, like, Malfoy. Like, yeah, Dio's my Malfoy, obviously, so. That's, like... <laughs> Griffith, this is like too intense. Yeah, he school. would get so. <laughs> he's, like, he's an Azkaban or Griffith something, dude. Sacrifices the children at Hogwarts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, Hogwarts Eclipse would be amazing. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so dark. Okay. Um, For real though, where did Japanese wizards go? I wonder. We 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 found out what U.S. Uh, schools we have via the website that they put J.K. up. J.K. Rowling's never heard of Japan, so. Yeah, I'm not. I'm certainly not going to ask her. I'm not going to reach out to J.K. Rowling on Twitter right now. What about Japan? <laughs> Stop writing blogs. What about Japan? <laughs> um, next question comes in from Caesar. Hello, allies. With the recent release of The Last of Us Part Two, I'm having some sort of deja vu feeling, meaning the console generation shift is very similar to when the first installment was released. So mm-hmm. my question to you, allies, is when will Sony and Naughty Dog announce The Last of Us Part Two for PS5? Here are some here's some data to help you do a better estimate. One minute took one year. Uh, Last of Us was released on June fourteenth, two thousand thirteen, for PS three. PS4 launched on November fifteenth, uh, twenty thirteen. Twenty two weeks after the game was released. The remaster came out April tenth, twenty fourteen, twenty weeks after the console launch. Last of Us Remaster for PS4 was released on July 29th, 2014. Last of Us Part 2 was released on June 19th. So with that data in mind, when do you think Sony and Naughty Dog will announce The Last of Us Part 2 for PS5? This whole backwards compatibility is so confusing, and it's mm. uh, such uncharted territory, no pun intended. Mm. Um, uh-huh. I, I honestly don't know what the future holds with remasters and stuff, because... I see. I always see a lot of complaints about like I don't want to buy a remaster. Like I, you know, it's it's oh if it's backwards compatible, it'll be better now. Like free patches, but like the good remasters have a lot of work that goes into them. That's just you know they, you don't put it into a computer and out pops a better version remastered. It's like developers work on that and they make it better. They add things. You know, the Last of Us remastered is sixty frames. Like mm-hmm. so. I don't know what the future holds for that. Uh, Huber, I think it would be more on the lines of like playing a PC version of a game mm-hmm. where like you can have lower settings, but if you play it on this, it'll be just run better or something like that. Instead of 30, it'll be 60. You can play at higher frame rate. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just yeah. depends how backwards compatible it actually is. Yeah, like are they yeah. just going to give start doing free patches? Like that well, that's seems the, yeah. like they'd lose a lot of money because that's that going to take like work. That sounds like what's happening with that sounds a like lot of games like Cyberpunk. Yeah. Cyberpunk yeah. has set the precedent for that. Yeah. It's like you get you get it on PS5 if you have it on PS4. And it's like Cyberpunk makes more sense because it's so multi-platform that, yeah, it'll work more like that computer uh, setting slider thing. But like, I have to think that Naughty Dog has definitely had PS5 dev units oh, for yeah. quite some time. So like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, Last of Us 2 is on PS5 much faster than it was on PS4. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the question is going to be, you know, what kinds of updates they're going to do to it. Because, like, I think Cyberpunk is actually a good example because when it comes out, when the PlayStation 5 comes out and when Cyberpunk's available, like, you'll be able to play Cyberpunk on a PlayStation 5, but it's essentially, like, going to be running at, you know, like whatever the PlayStation 5 can do out of the box in terms of upgrading settings. I don't know how much that's going to be related to load times or frame rate or whatever. But then later on, they're essentially going to patch in a PS5 version of Cyberpunk, and then that's what you're going to play. So I, I I'm, imagine that stuff like Last of Us, uh, you know, they've, they've already said that games after a certain date have to be PlayStation 5 compatible. Um, so I imagine something similar is going to be happening with, with Last of Us, where you're going to probably be able to play it on better settings than you can on a PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, and then later on, they will have like a big uh, patch that you know improves resolution on textures and adds ray tracing to things and all of that stuff. Uh, I would not be surprised if 
they already have been putting in the work on totally. the new 3D mm-hmm. audio with how much those audio designers have been tweeting about everything they did in this game. Uh, so yeah. But it, again, man, it makes you wonder, like, is that is that where we're going? Just free free patches for everyone? That'd be pretty awesome. Because remasters uh, it's, it's are free like if you expensive. bought the game. They're yeah, just for the right games. You, but they're not they're, just making you buy the game twice. For sure, but like more people bought the last of us remastered than last of us like right out of the gate initially it's much, yeah it's much more of an xbox thing currently in the climate than a playstation thing that like sure. xbox like just take it just play just play 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 where sony's like eh. <laughs> we're putting a lot of money into this you know like last if, of us and tsushima are two big big things happening this summer and so yeah that'd be a surprise if they did that if last of us has any like dlc or add-ons like that then that's an easy way for them to resell it, it yeah as, well, a, as like a game of the year edition they said uh in the kind of funny spoiler cast they said no no plans for dlc but mm. you never know interesting that well we, we're still waiting on on factions as well yeah the mul- maybe it's just multiplayer they'll do instead oh right hell yeah yeah they'll totally bundle. forgot about that yeah don't sleep on factions yeah. Huber, I played, right before I played Last of Us 2, I played my first matches of Last of Us 1 multiplayer. How amazing is it? Please tell me you loved it. I don't think I would use the term amazing, but I had a good time. I definitely had a good time. <laughs> you got Sorry, it. I'm not trying to bring it down. I did like yeah. it. I did. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We should, we still... should cue that up. It's still, those very still live? Yeah, those yeah, are very still active. Still yeah. Live? Oh, I got okay. into games, I mean, it was, you know, right before The Last of Us 2, so that probably explains a lot of it. But, uh, yeah, that'd be a fun stream, for sure. Is that going to be on PlayStation 5, the Factions multiplayer uh, from Last of Us 2 now? It, we know we know nothing, but I would, oh. I would assume. Oh. We don't even know if it's Factions. They haven't specifically even yeah, said yeah, Factions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I bring it up because Grand Theft Auto Online is going to be on PlayStation 5, and, you know, Last of Us and uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 came out the same year. So I wonder, <clears> you know, <laughs> in terms of Here a, we go. a quality thing. There's any anything to discern there? Hmm. Hmm. I am I will be watching remasters closely this coming generation. I'm excited to see what happens with sure. free patches and, and whatnot. Your enthusiasm for remasters can definitely be infectious. I I, Love I appreciate that perspective for sure. Love the good ones. Um how do you feel about Mafia 2? I, I don't know. Nah. They yeah. just patched it. They, I haven't I haven't had the time. Oh. Like a week or, a week or two ago, I'm going to do a, a report on it. Nice. Nice. Syndrome. I want to finish it for the end of the year, Huber. I really, I got, you know, bigger fish <clears> to fry right now, but uh, I loved it. Hell yeah. Good game. Some games Huber has to tell me are bad. <laughs> I'm just having a great time. I'm like, uh, this Gutter Trash, game's great. I believe. Huber's like, is... no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> what Huber's not. Like? Open your eyes. Um, our next question comes in from Master Pants. Would you be willing to do a, a bit of troll play? The what? scenario. You are a fairly rich and famous actor slash voice actor, any gender. You're not quite Marvel famous, though. You've auditioned for every Marvel movie, and you've never gotten a single call back. Mm. You couldn't even get a gig in the Avengers video game. Mm. The phrase again. That's so funny. Okay. You're feeling kind of down and drinking a lot of fireball, parentheses, whiskey, while playing online video games and just wow. getting wrecked all night. Okay, gamers, you say. I'm going to troll you gamers real good, you say. Your brilliant and fiery idea is to update your LinkedIn page with an entry that says you've completed voice work for a certain character in a certain video game. Could be any character in any video game, real, fake, current, future, re- current release, future release, or unknown. Something that would cause gamers to have some kind of emotional reaction, either right away or later when they find out it's not real. Hmm, are you feeling evil or jovial? You don't have to be mean. So, what character in what video game would you enter on your LinkedIn page? Vincent Frog. Valentine remake two. Oh, sorry. Shit, you go. <laughs> what? Vincent Valentine remake two. Oh, oh no yeah, way. that's good. That's good. No way, Jones. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, we have to be like a celebrity doing a voiceover? No, you have to like update your LinkedIn page okay. saying that you're voicing a character oh. as a troll. Okay. Who would that I got troll one. be? Okay. Frog in the Chrono Trigger <laughs> sequel. Not uh, Chrono Cross. 
Link in Breath of the Wild 2. Uh, I'd pick Doom Just Guy. Link won't talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gordon Freeman, Half Life. Yeah, that's a great oh. one. Yeah. yeah, Gordon Freeman, absolutely. You could do something like Solaire in Elden Ring or something, and just make <laughs> his back go yeah. crazy. Yeah, uh, like what? It's related to Dark Souls. A Pierce Brosnan voice match for GoldenEye Two. <laughs> 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 I could believe that, Jones. Sure. I could believe you pull that off. Uh, I don't know why this is the dumb thing that came to my head. But like, I'm actually the actor that plays Nolan North. <laughs> right? <laughs> Blood. That that's great. That's so good. <laughs> so, somebody in chat said Goku and Smash. Sora and Smash. Oh, These that's are good. a good one. These are good. All right. Miss, our, oh, sorry. Sora. I miss Sora. Oh. I want to hang out with Sora. Makes me feel good. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> I'm it. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel good too, Yeah. Our next question comes in from Michael. Hello, Easy Allies. What dead game or game series would you like most like to see a new game or remake of? I'd like to see the 2007 Eternal Sonata game get a chance to become a series. Love and respect. Mm. Mercenaries. Sick pick, Jones. Yeah. I mean, SSX is the obvious answer, but... I mean, we've... we've... I refuse to call it dead. Yeah. Saying it's dead makes me... I'll, I'll do everyone the favor. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Yes. Ah, it's a good pick. Hell yeah. I, I, um, go ahead. I am terrified. Utterly terrified. This is a newer game, but I'm utterly terrified we're never going to get another Evil Within. Mm. So I'm on like Evil mm. Within 3 dreams every day of my life now until mm. that happens. Because I, I just... I'm scared. I'm scared it's dead. Mm. After that stream with Dawn, I am blown away still that puzzle fighter is not on current systems in any form hmm. what the heck we need yeah. more puzzle fighter oh. yeah. they had that it's, failed it mobile should be game. easy to do i would really like to see a new jet set radio yeah. i want to see what they do with it mm. and dragon's dogma too of course yeah I mean, I mean that's coming baby <laughs> yeah. dragon's coming. dogma lives forever dead about dragon's dogma. Uh, it's coming did someone right say that, like that the, 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 there's still hope for Dragon's Dogma two recently or something? There's so much hope. Yeah. It's coming, mm -hmm. dude. Guaranteed. The hope. Someone were... in Capcom is <laughs> mounting a ogre right now. At this point, I'm convinced that you're working on it in like some capacity. <laughs> it's coming. Creative I'm consultant. <laughs> Uh, next question comes in from Robert Lee. Good day, allies. I think Michael, Michael Huber is a badass for refusing to use silent mode on survival difficulty in Last of Us 2. I tried it myself, and I died a lot. Not giving <laughs> up, though. Do you guys have any other examples of making games more difficult for yourself? Turning off game assistance, not using powerful equipment, playing blindfolded. Who's the I think real badass of easy end? Huber, I thought about you every time I hit L1. Every single time. <laughs> it was the Huber button. I was just oh, like, look what I'm doing, Huber. Ha ha ha. You know, like, <laughs> no, no way would I play Last of Us without that sucker, man. Oh, you, <laughs> don't, you're not, you don't use listen mode, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. in, uh, in the, just a little, a little context, it's not like I'm some like self-imposed rules in a game. But in the original, when you played on hard, you could turn it off. And then Survivor, it was just disabled automatically just out of the gate on survivor in the first game it's not even there so yeah. i just initially like i never even used it like i played the game a couple times and was like i I'd never even like press this button i've never even used this mode. so when two came out i just like i was like Ugh. yeah you got in my head huber i i barely touched it and like i think the last time i touched it was probably 10 hours ago <laughs> nice wow. uh, yeah you, you, yeah man it went to, if you turn it off dude you really transport into that world you gotta Use your own eyes, use your own ears a little more. This isn't like Love a difficulty it. thing, but when I played GTA 4, like there was always like the week where I didn't know the cheats when every GTA game came out. And then like the cheats would come out and I would just use the cheats in my playthrough and just be like, all right, give me all the weapons and the ammo and everything. And when I was playing GTA 4, even after the cheats came out, I would still drive to the gun shop, get out of the car, walk in, buy the guns. So I was just like, this game looks so great. It's really immersive. I'm like, I don't want to cheat in any way. Like I want to have to go through the motions, RP style. I will say though that like, you know, the the one of my downfalls of like a a, a stealth 
based player and like i i get spotted and like all right checkpoint restart <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong yeah. with that? try that again yeah i restarted that's, billions jo of times like, jones that's what i loved about desperados is in the beginning when it tells you to quick save and quick load and keep yeah, like yeah, yeah. you get it's like hey this is encouraged this is part of the game. oh yeah like this is okay and i was like oh okay i feel good 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 now let's <laughs> <Yeah>. this <laughs> The, the first thing that comes to my mind is like re I'm replaying Dark Souls 2, you know, and like through my original playthrough of Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, I don't think I ever once used a shield and I ha for sure Badass. haven't this time playing Dark Souls 2 at all. Dude. Like I haven't even held one. Uh, That's intense. And there have been plenty of situations where I was like, if I had a shield, this would be really easy. <laughs> but with power stancing, especially, it's pretty sweet. You don't need a shield. Too, you only need a shield for a lot of things in that game, man. Yeah. You gotta use any magic. You yeah, don't need a shield. Great. I yeah, just, I don't I, use magic either. I like need a shield. I'm so bad at parrying and so bad at like dodge roll. Oh, I just dodge like, everything. I don't yeah. really parry either because I can't with my setup. But yeah. I think uh, I've um, done a. Oh, go ahead. I think regularly playing fighting games online is a constant sea of salt and torment. Yep. <laughs> that you don't need to subject yourself to correct <laughs> uh i've done a few no hit or no death runs on like souls games nice that's awesome i've played like a lot of zelda games back in the day with three hearts only just like little things like that Sick. no like, kill yeah. no kill runs i used to do for, mm -hmm. yeah those are fun like metal gear 2 and 3 and stuff i would i would do non-lethal runs i always enjoyed that uh, definitely like Brad Tenchu runs where I tried to like not be seen at all. Mm -hmm. mm. Like even for a second, even somebody being like, huh? You know, like if like I didn't get caught, but he kind of saw me, like I would always feel so, so good. Like, Silent yeah. assassin. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> great. Sniffer clips. Sniffer clips. <laughs> oh, Debbie, oh, that's great. Sniffer clips, dude. Wow. <laughs> Making great a statement. Great callback. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, don't be taking a stand. Unhinged, man. Yeah. They, they announce a sequel that has all these new hard modes. We're like, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question comes in from Evo Show. Hey, allies, with people playing Cyberpunk 2077 using GeForce Now, do you think this will be the future for the press slash an option? With streaming becoming a bigger thing for next generation, would you ever a game like Halo Infinite over xCloud or prefer to fly down to play it? in normal circumstances instead of waiting in lines at e3 would you rather play the games in your easy office slash homes i really like this question i'm all about it yeah <laughs> i i hate i really do hate like going to a place and having it be all fancy and you're just like no i don't want any yeah. of this. you know i don't i don't need this song and dance i just want to play the fucking so game. true just let me and play the game <laughs> And I, that that's so true, Ben. I think that's why E three is better and like so 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 awesome is because so many so many times you're in some back door <laughs> room. They're like, uh, "Do you want like a bottled water?" That's it. Yeah, right. It's like here's the the little flimsy like twenty inch monitor. Like, all right, here you go. One of my one of my favorite E three memories was I think Blood and I were literally sitting on the floor with uh, the guy from Image and Form playing. Uh, Steam World Dig Two, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shout out. Or was that you, Brandon? We were both there. It was the three of us. Yeah. Oh, it was the three of us. Yeah. And for like an hour. Yeah, that was. We great. were just like sitting on the literal floor <laughs> with a switch playing yeah. Steam World, and I, I was so hyped. <laughs> yeah. That was really great. Yeah. What did we it do was... that with Blood? We did that. Pony Chop Chop. What game Conan was that Chop again? Chop Chop was fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So we had, we definitely had a couple of demos last. That was last literally three just that like... were just <laughs> in the hallway somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on a switch yeah matt papa yeah I, I, but that's to... the thing that i i totally miss from something like this is yeah just getting that more solid connection with someone mm -hmm. and we, we can do a video call or whatever but yeah you know, just that that opportunity to like okay we get we get the presentation and then we sit down and we play the game and we get our thoughts from that and then we we have time to yeah you know hang around and like okay who's you know whether you know I, I don't like go for the formal interviews that much but like just the chance to like you know be grabbing like a plate of cheese and talk about it <laughs> the game yeah. with the developer mm -hmm. uh, a little bit and, and just kind of pick their brains without it being like such a yeah sit down formal kind of thing lactose privilege 
I remember. <laughs> I remember I had a great like boss tutorial when I first checked out Horizon, where I just legit could not. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and it was just a lot of like, if you use this and then this on top of it, you do a ton of damage, and I just couldn't figure that out. And so it was nice like to sit there with the dev. Um, I also love just hanging out with friends. You know, like there's a couple preview events that, you know that, that we've been involved in. You know, this summer, and I was just like, oh, there's my friend, and oh, they're going to that Discord room. Okay, <laughs> like all right, it'd be nice to like hang out and chat. And uh, one thing that I, because I, I love open world games, I love games that you get a lot of choice and that can be very difficult and scary to do in a demo or just really like time consuming. And so one thing that I remember at the Spider-Man preview event, one thing that I definitely took notice of is like, like, okay, I'm at a stopping point. I'm gonna go get a sandwich. And then just like walking back to my station, I just kind of looked around the room and like every screen was completely different. Like, and some games are very linear in the demos. And so it's almost like you're watching a bunch of people watch the same movie and they're just at like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And like that informs a little bit about the quality of a game to me. If even just at the demo, I can see people just you know, taking off and all sorts of different crazy directions. And um, it, or, or if somebody's doing, if I'm looking over and I'm like, what is that? I've never even seen that, you know? Um, that's cool. That's good to get that perspective. I, uh, I've really learned to appreciate when a, a, a like game attendant or whatever like has some restraint. Some sometimes they're mm -hmm. so suffocating. It's like, dude, I, I have I've been playing the game for thirty seconds. Like, let me yeah. let me explore your game. This mm -hmm. is this is you're, you're like breathing down my neck. Yeah. I, and like I, I appreciate the people that are like, okay, I've been watching you for a while. You know, I've waited, I've let you like kind of get acclimated to it, and now I'm gonna maybe tap you on the shoulder and say something. That's totally cool, and I understand that. But sometimes they are just like mm -hmm. suffocating. Yeah, it's like calm, calm yourself. Or when they like are the opposite and tell you like, oh man, you're doing better than anyone. Oh, else that sucks yeah. too. That's the best score. Uh, oh my, yes, yeah, yeah. they do that sure shit all the time, and they're yeah. like, wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, that shit sucks. Ben, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you always wonder like. Man, how much of this is you buttering me up, and how much of this is like these people really suck at me? Yeah. Well, and it's right. like there's a there's a tough thing with like uh, when we would go to stuff because people know that like Ben and Huber and Brad and I really really love Souls games, so like there's this expectation mm -hmm. that we're like the Souls people, and so like they always tell you like, oh, only one person has beat the boss, you know? And then they like, you could tell they like expect you to do it yeah. too, you know? And mm. you're just like, well, don't hold your breath. Yeah, Souls, that's always, yeah. I feel like when they've had Souls demos, they always kind of set it up that way. Like, yeah. This is like the status of being the person that could actually beat the demo. Musty Chef asks how the Red Dead preview event was. And that was just me. That was me and two PR people, you know? That mm. was nice. That was like, that, that was pampering. I don't mind, Ben. That was like, <laughs> ah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Where do I but, I, right? but yeah, going back to like people being there, like a lot of times, like, you know, there've been a couple of summers where like, I've just gone up to Ubisoft like so many freaking times um, and just talking about other things, you know, with contacts, you know, about just like what's going on in the industry, like what's going on with E3, mm -hmm. you know, getting that feedback and, and uh, really, yeah, being have, able to have those conversations and, you know, see, see how things are going. Um, they even asked me about a, a notebook I had that uh, one of our our uh, fans sent in. They're like, oh, yeah, maybe we can order some of those to promote one of our games. <laughs> okay. Let needs more notebooks. Everyone send in notebooks. I also, like, I'm not never going to turn down going to a city I've never been to. I remember I went to Montreal to check out uh, Rogue and Unity at mm -hmm. the same time. And I think we knew about Rogue, but they dropped, you know, or we knew about Unity, but they dropped Rogue on us. That so they were like, well, there's another, you know. Assassin's Creed game. And I remember that night, I just like walked around Montreal. You know, it was just neat. Like, mm. um, that was a lot of fun. That's the only, it's still the only time I've ever been. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Cyberpunk was going to be everybody going to Poland. I, I, I think that was the intention before COVID happened. Mm. I, All of this said, though, like the technology of being able to play a game in a computer in Poland or whatever without downloading anything is like pretty cool. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty yeah. bad. It does sound like it was a little laggy. But, no, I'm yeah. Sure. I'm sure. yeah, we're not quite there yet, but we're 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 yeah. getting there. I I get really also annoyed when they're it's like oh hey go and like mingle for two hours and then play the game for thirty minutes. It's like no yeah no. Yeah. yeah I hate that I can't no. stand, it's the other way around. I can't <laughs> no. stand events that are about one game. Honestly, I I just don't like the whole process because it because it is that like ben is saying just like two hours of mingling and yeah 
you know like dinner and like all these no. all this it's just all these distractions and it's yeah. like dude just put me in a room with uh, four walls and the game and let me just play and that's yeah. it yeah really big speeches thanks for coming everybody yeah. just got a couple things we want to illustrate it's like slide one of 30 you're like <sighs> all right you press <laughs> the circle button to crouch I like, uh, I love Brian Intahar. Like he did a great job. But like I was at the Spider-Man preview event, just tapping my feet on the floor. And he's like, this has been a love, you know, a labor of love for all of us. We're big fans. I'm just like, let me play the game. <laughs> Come yeah, on. I, 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 I'm not saying it's bad, but I have no interest in greasing palms. I just want to play the games, talk about them. That's yep. I want. I'll let Brandon and Blood do that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Here for. <laughs> I'm here for business. Uh... <laughs> Uh, next question comes in from Varun. Hi, Alice. I've grown tired of most conventions that surround gaming nowadays. Um, I'm not saying it was great before, but it seems to have... Oh, conversations, not conventions. I'm sorry, I misread that. Oh. But it seems... I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. wait. But it seems to have gotten worse with Death Stranding and unbearable now that The Last of Us Part Two has come out. It's full of black and white statements and people that are just parrot what they've heard. Yes. And this is coming from someone that isn't personally involved in many of these discussions. I would have no idea what it would feel like being someone like Huber, whose integrity is getting questioned for no reason. So my question is this. What are your thoughts on what is happening? Is it just a symptom of the times or something that was always coming? Will it get better? I think it's the perfect storm, specifically with Last of Us. You know, it's uh, exclusive. It's mm -hmm. a sequel to one of the most revered games of all time. Uh, it's controversial story matter. It's during quarantine and and you know social justice movements. Like there's a lot happening right now, so I think people are definitely more on edge right now than than ever before. Um, so I, I think it's a perfect storm, and you know people are yeah. living on Twitter now. People are just like That's yeah, everyone's, everyone is. We're living on Twitter, and it's when it's just, an exclusive, it definitely seemed to notice it more. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think people are very testy right now. Like mm -hmm. Shane Dawson, who I don't even follow or know a lot about, is flipping out on somebody, and like Ninja's flipping out on somebody today on social media. And it's just like, oh. and yeah. like so many of the comments are just like, just call him and talk about it. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you having, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that's that's like the big thing for me is when I can see when I see a statement that's literally just like, I want to fight, I want to throw this out there because I know it's going to piss people off. It's just like, all right, move on. Yeah, it's frustrating because yeah. there's, there's no there's no conversation on Twitter. It's just, right. they say a statement, you say a statement. They say, say there's no there's yeah. no dialogue, there's no nuance, so that's pretty frustrating. Somebody um, posted a joke that I thought was so right where like, you say something on social media where you're like, I like bananas. And then somebody comes at you with like, what? You, why are you not giving apples any recognition? Did you even <laughs> consider the oranges? And it's like <laughs> trying to drag in all of this stuff for no reason. It's like, no, I just mm -hmm. like bananas. That's called a straw man argument. Yeah. It's, uh, it's... the internet destroyed humanity. <laughs> yeah. I, but I, I do think, to, I think this was always there. I think it's just more visible and constant now. Like, mm -hmm. if you go back and you look at, the discussions surrounding Jeff Gerspin giving Twilight Princess an 8.8. <laughs> like, people oh, I were, remember that, yeah. People were just as insane. Um, so I, I, I do think this has always existed. I, I think the unfortunate part is that now, like, more money is being made off of the constant anger than ever, I think. Hmm. I think the big thing for me that like the only thing that I would throw at people that are just like, oh, you gave it a 10, you know, you're, you're a shill, you're in the paid pocket. It's like, what could I do to convince you otherwise? Like, if you really, yeah. if you really believe that, if you're like, I don't believe that game's a 10, it's like, what if it is, how would you believe it? Like, what could that person do to then convince you? It's mm -hmm. literally just that mindset that you're in. It doesn't matter what the other party is doing at all, what they're saying, how they operate, you know what the, their decision making and how they produce their work it's literally you're just like no i just will not believe that for this one property period it's because yeah i think you're never going to convince someone like that if they especially if they've actually played the game so that type of person probably has found a fault in the game mm -hmm. and then they're like oh even though these are opinions this is still like a how can anyone not see this as a flaw so therefore you can never give this game a 10 so therefore anyone who's giving this a game a 10 is clearly like overlooking mm -hmm. stuff or like exaggerating or they'll, they'll, they'll come up with some reason like that that it's not that everyone's not like this but i definitely know people who 
get a little pedantic like that where they just get hooked on things like that and they can't let that go and it's just like you're not just you're not gonna win that you're just not gonna win that conversation and there are people who take it a step further who have actually like it's not just like what they truly believe it's like they have like a motive you know they have some kind of like ulterior motive that they're trying to get and pushing some agenda and it's just like there is nothing and like the fact that they're making you think about that and and like what can i do and stuff like that's i think that's wrong i I think that's not what you should be worrying and focusing wasting your energy on that type of stuff because that is yeah i i I think you just yeah that the the shitty thing about all this is like it just it makes people who genuinely like having and participating in discourse even engaging Mm -hmm. with people who disagree with them and having as you said even that conversation it just turns genuine people off to that now so you see less people wasting their effort trying to even engage now. So it's just the people who want to like just shout and stuff. It's a shouting match and you lose that. So it hurts like everything. It's pretty bad. Yeah, absolutely, Damiani. I, I, I can't, Huber, I can't imagine what it was like to review that game um, because, you know, I bought it. I waited for it to come out. I played it. I played all of it very quickly and I loved it, you know, and... Uh, I have a lot that I want to say about it. I'm very excited for the spoiler mode. And it's like, oh, I can't wait. I had this genuine reaction to this game that I enjoyed immensely. And I can't wait for people to tell me that my own feelings are not true. It's like, okay, cool. And it's just insane. It's absolutely insane. Like, can, can you really not process that somebody maybe had a different opinion than you on it? Yeah. And it's coming from both sides too, which is even worse because the people that, people that, don't like it or getting angry at the people that like it and the people that like it now are getting angry at the people that don't like it so it's oh, just yeah. like <laughs> right yeah a lot of name calling and stuff totally going around. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just like dude you you like it cool you don't like it cool yeah. let's let's discuss like exactly exactly awesome like i, I want to know why you don't like it i want to know why you like it like that i love that and that's just not happening right now well like, and so often right now uh external factors become like like and personal attacks and stuff like people will discount something i say because of how i look or whatever and like just out of hand like uh, on, on my most recent uh, developer interview video with the gloomwood guys one of the comments is like here's three pretentious assholes who won't even play this game and i'm like two of the people in this video are making this game. Like, what are you even, like, you didn't even read the title of the video before you came in here to shit on me. And it's just like, I'm excited to talk about Last of Us 2 because I have a shitload of things to say about it. But I'm terrified because any opinion I have is going to be couched within people's idea of me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, why should that factor in at all? I'm just Mm -hmm. talking about a video game like that ostensibly like is not all that important in the grand scheme of like human experience. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with people critiquing your opinion or being like, well, you know, I don't think you made a very good point here or very good case here, but it's like, that's not even the level of conversation that we're at. We're at like, you like it. So you're awful or you don't like it. So you're a bigot. And it's like, (laughs) what? No, like, I would be totally cool with people being like, hey, you know, I disagree with you on what you're saying here because you didn't consider this. Like, I wish we could get to that level of, of, of discourse with it. That That's healthy. That's productive. But it's just oh, like... And especially like with this game where it's like people before the game had even come out, I guess, based on leaks and just yeah. like what they knew were accusing the game of being like SJW, like whatever virtue signaling game, you know, whatever. And it's like... I've played this entire game. Like, it ain't that. <laughs> like, it's just a game wherein some of the characters have a different experience than you, but it isn't even like the main focal point oftentimes of what's happening. And it's just like, you just you just want to be mad about that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, you just want to call something SJW because you're upset, whatever. That so gloom would call out, Ian, as much as I hate toxicity in social media, I do cherish every time something like that does happen. I remember on Twitter, somebody came after the woman who costume designed Raiders and like disagreed with her on her like what inspired her to like, create Indy's costume. 
<laughs> yeah. They were just like, actually, if you watch that, you know, Maltese Falcon or whatever, there's some Humphrey Bogart movie or something. She, they were like, nah, technically it was this. <laughs> it was like, she she designed the thing she's talking about, man. Yeah. It just shows that like exactly what you were saying. It's just kind of like, nope, no research, no. Didn't even click to check on who that person was on Twitter. Right. And I love that. I love like seeing somebody, you know, new or somebody in a company I didn't know. I can't remember where I heard this, but like there was a woman talking about how she was at a, she's like a scientist or something and a writer. And uh, she was at a, a meeting thing, whatever. And someone, she said something and then some guy corrected her and then as just to justify her being wrong quoted her own book at her and then and then he was like so yeah maybe you should you know do your research a little before you before you say something like that and she goes well i wrote that book that you just quoted at me so <laughs> you know it's like uh whoopsies <laughs> i think death stranding is an interesting one because it was you know a little it's obviously before quarantine yeah right. um but but like the exclusive wars are just so tiring like just like shitting on a game because it's an exclusive or you know I, i've been thinking i've just been thinking about it a lot like when a huge game comes out it's almost like there's this expectation for everyone to like play it or be into it or to have an opinion on it and it's like what if you just don't like sci-fi what if you just don't like zombies or something you parcel know? delivery yeah yeah <laughs> and I, I think that's okay i think if you know if that's if you're not into it do you really need to to shit on it and say it's bad just just say you're it's not for you or you're not well, into it also like know. it's and i mean maybe this is from our perspective because we generally have access to multiple consoles or whatever but like I feel like the console wars concept is kind of a relic at this point. Like <laughs> things are so delineated except for like these few exclusive titles. Like it kind of doesn't matter <laughs> what you're on for like most games, multi-platform games, obviously. So it's like weird. It feels like an old argument. It's like, you're, you're still upset about that. Like, come on, whatever. I think, and then go ahead. Ben. I, I think what is really frustrating to the, to the arguments is, a lot of times it just feels like very purposefully selective, right? Like if, if somebody comes after you, Huber, and they're like, oh, you only ever give things high scores. And it's like, are you just willingly ignoring all the things that have scored low? Like 76 is my average score, according to Open Critic. Like, I mean, I, I, I think 75.9. Like, yeah. I think you can... ALS tends to be harsh, according <laughs> to the metrics. Like we yep. tend to be harsher than most. I think that you could make an argument like oh well i think even 76 is too high and it's like okay well that argument makes more sense than being like like focusing on this one game that got a high score and then like extrapolating it while ignoring you know an entire body of work that just doesn't seem right well because logical. it's a bad it's a bad faith argument like their intention is not to you know disagree with huber's review thing it's just to hurt huber right. and start a fight right and and I've actually been thinking about Avengers a lot. The the game. You, now, yeah. Yeah. Because now this is becoming this huge, like, you know, people are hating on it. And then all the people that are really into it are just like trying to defend it and and and, and praise it. And it's just like getting kind of personal. Um, and it's just like, yeah, some people are really into Avengers and that's enough. Let them enjoy it. Like if you don't like like it just it brings me back to the fact that it's a big triple a game and that like everyone should have an opinion on it and be on board or, or something and it's like if you don't like avengers out of the gate like this game is probably not for you and that's that's that like do you need to go to war on it and like shit all over it i don't know well and it's like it's a funny thing because it's like we're critics right mm -hmm. like yeah. it's part of our job you guys more so than me but it's like naughty dog style is not my i don't like that kind of game really like it's just not the thing i gravitate towards mm -hmm. but it's like i can play last of us 2 knowing that and like try to look past it you know and mm -hmm. like there are, there are still some things where i'm just like why do people like this but <laughs> we'll talk about it tomorrow <laughs> but yeah well i mean i i think 
as long as you're honest about that, that's still a valuable perspective. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, um, because you just have to come out of the gate and say, "I hate the Avengers." <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm saying hypothetical so person. Yeah, like you know, Ian, you, you and I constantly talk about like you just don't enjoy platinum games. It's it's not your thing. That doesn't mean that your perspective is invalid or that like it's not an interesting conversation to have. It super is. But that is an important thing to consider yeah. when discussing that opinion, right? And um, it's like, it it does not preclude the, the possibility of me finding things too... Li- like, there are a lot of things right. in Nier Automata that I liked quite a bit. Right. You right. know? So it's just like, yeah. And it's, and it's good to get that variety of opinions because I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of people, you know, that feel just like you. You know, just yeah. like there are people that feel like me or Huber or Blood or Damiani or whoever. Anyway, the comment section on our last of a spoiler mode is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> uh, comments oh, are, are freaking sure. now because they're like, tomorrow? Uh, we're <laughs> recording that tomorrow. I will do my best mm-hmm. to get that in front of all your eyeballs tomorrow. Oh, but right. Sorry. <laughs> it's yeah. possible after we record it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm the too. last one to try to finish it. I was feeling bad yesterday. So You're the last to play it all. I'm, I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> You're the last of us. Um, our next question. Well, not, not a question. <laughs> our next thing comes in from mgsj bibbity bobbity boo love mm-hmm. and respect that is all nice <laughs> love that's it a th- that's a thing all right yeah bobbity though with bees not yeah. bobbity bibbity bobbity, bobbity boo, boo. Mm. <laughs> do you know it as mm. bibbity bobbity boo i thought that was it now people like you make me sick <laughs> That's what we're talking about. You naughty dog <laughs> shill? You shill? Who paid you? Who in the Bobbity lobbyists paid you? Yeah, Bobbity with the D. Where are those checks coming from? Huh? <laughs> Who are you? Um, our next question comes in from Jesse. Jesse Blue, hi allies. Hope you're doing well and are not too stir crazy yet. I miss seeing you guys in the studio, showing your affection for each other. I miss that too. Uh, I love how much you love each other. It was always so genuine and comfortable, and it made me see how real men can still show their emotions and care for each other without fear of judgment. Real men. (laughs) Real (laughs) men. So it turns out I will be having my hours cut again for the next 10 weeks, so I'm really going to push Mm. recording more material and auditioning for more voiceover projects. Nice. Nice. My question for you is, if you had 10 extra hours a week but had to use it to start a new healthy habit or learn a new skill, what would you choose and why? Great question. I should probably get some exercise. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that, to do more same. exercise. I yeah, uh, I go now. I I don't go outside like ever. Yeah, I, I probably go outside once a week. That's Days it. at a time. Yeah. yeah, like I have to make. I have to like go on a walk with the dog with Omar, or mm-hmm. like I don't go outside. Yeah, that's what's great about Sophia. Yeah, it gets me out of the house. Shout out to Active, uh, Active, mm-hmm. but with a P. Amanda's been using it, and they have a lot of. It's really great not because it's not like it, Jones. it's not like it's like you should be doing this. Um, it's like it's like what do, what do you want to do? Do you want to lose weight? Do I get more limber? Do you just want to like exercise? And then like okay, now that you've told me that, these are the other things you can do. How long do you work out for? Five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes? And uh, Amanda just has been flipping out about it. She really really likes it. So I got an app that I really like called Hydro Coach that nice. tells me to drink water and keeps track of how much water I'm drinking. Yeah, Very helpful. Sweet. I would wager that we are all incredibly dehydrated. Of course, yeah. I'll get a <laughs> headache and be like, what the heck? And then I'm like, yeah. oh, I have had no water today. <laughs> I drink a lot I of water, actually. Stood up yeah, or Brad had water today. Shit water. <laughs> I love John Mulaney. He said, he's like, I didn't drink water the entire time I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was solitary. John Mulaney is so funny. Uh, I would write a book for sure. Because um, yeah, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> make music, write a book. Yeah, the the one of the the ironies or whatever of 2020, uh, the the downfalls, the casualties. Uh, I was like, I need to get back out there and start going to shows again, going going to concerts, mm. and get back in the scene. Mm. Not happening. Not happening. <laughs> I want to go to the gym so bad, dude. I can't. Yeah. I there, wanna, I Disneyland, wanna land a draw. It's never gonna happen. Oh, though. Huber! I, I don't wanna make that. a new. I, I just wanna make like a new Twitter banner, because the one I have now has Bossman in it. So I need a new one. Just Sorry, scribble Bossman. them out. Yeah, it's just 
Just gouge it out, Lisa. Him. <laughs> yeah. Just like put X's over his face. <laughs> Erase him. Actually, it would be funny if you could find some. The like the bar over the eyes. Uh, <laughs> like, I want. Yeah. I wanted to do that on head our it. Twitter. Thing. <laughs> Two things that I really want to do and just continue to not do them are: I really want to play guitar. Um, pick that back up because I used to do that. And garden. I would love to have mm-hmm. a garden and grow my own food and like Sick. cook with it. I would love that so much. Dude. And I don't do that either. Dude, Ben's garden. <laughs> so I pulled You were drawing shit. streams as hype, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh. it is. I am I'm like not even exaggerating. Elementary school level. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible too, <laughs> man. But, but you can get summer. better. Yeah. yeah. Like elementary school kids are Probably ten times better than me. That's not even the exception. <laughs> I I have painted on an ECI live stream before. <laughs> oh yeah, it was not good. <laughs> I really want to see Hubert draw now. Yeah. <laughs> it, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. It's terrible. I think everybody would be. Tablet. I think everybody would be behind you and would only try to help you. Yeah, it's like stick figures and what blobs. If, <laughs> what if it really is so bad that Hubert like? dedicates himself to try to learn and he does a stream and then everyone everyone unanimously is just like oh no no <laughs> it's, it's that oh. it's that, that would never happen oh, oh. oh no 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 <laughs> oh no 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 oh, no 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 all right uh oh, i want that 10 hours now <laughs> the next question comes in Here from go. moof I'm oh. almost done with season one of Tabletop Escapades. Why did Lars have grains? Gra- not, not grains. Why did I say grains? Well, why did Lars have grains? Grain pass. It's grain pass. Grain pass. Yeah, damn it, you beat me to it. I can answer this. Um, the whole, to the best of my recollection, the whole thing with Lars had grain was just another failed <laughs> tabletop storyline. Plot line, yeah, yeah that we ignored. Failed, yeah, another failed plot line. The, Lars was meant to kind of betray the heroes at the beginning. He he was... I was he, right! Yeah, working with the Nightingales. I, I, I believe... I, I don't remember... I, I had, like, some sort of plan. I don't remember the full plan. But I believe that Lars was doing that. He wasn't supposed to die so quickly. But then that happened... <laughs> like most of the tabletop games. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it really is in my mind just kind of like this flurry of noise. But there was meant... Supposed to be meant more stuff with Lars and then it just kind of became a meme and so yeah that that was sort of the end of it who did who did we try to patch up with the grain who did we stick it in oh my god somebody you? got wounded that was you you, that was you. you. Yeah, did i, I put think. it in my own wound yeah. yeah okay and then it got like infected, infected. yeah, yeah. <laughs> classic so oh, good tabletop <laughs> yeah but there were that, i mean that happened all the time i mean that was, that's really the the running theme of the show mm-hmm. um is i would have an idea for something and then you guys would just go in a completely opposite direction and that's you know that's the whole point you, the players are yeah. in control you want them to have fun so chaos we chaos. had fun yeah Absolutely we did chaos. we had a blast <laughs> but it would make it confusing because sometimes it would be so far off of what i planned that it, like <laughs> It'd be like, okay, well, this is what I wanted, and this is what was happening, and trying to like bridge those two uh, gaps would be difficult. Well, and you're you're always doing the you were doing the Patreon D and D in the also, same in world, yeah. and like we would hear like little snippets of what they were doing, and like apparently most of the time they were just doing great and yeah. like solving yeah. problems. And, we like, were the, we were the B team for sure. Yeah, <laughs> we were just like skittling around making a mess. Like, I'm I, even not even aware of the real problem. <laughs> I still do patron D and D, and it's been a blast. And we're doing kind of a new storyline that is ultimately kind of connecting with old storylines. And I'm much happier with how the story is playing out. It's just a little bit more consistent than sometimes we accomplished with tabletop. The thing nice. I will but give us credit for, for is that we always kept Ben on his toes. Yeah, for oh, better yeah. or for worse. Yeah, yeah, made yeah, a yeah. good show. <laughs> Absolutely. It was great. It was super, super fun. Definitely rolling with the punches. I remember, Ben, I remember when we started season two and you said, you're like, okay, we're going to do a more focused story. It's going to be like yeah. 10 or 20 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like 100. And like, I believed that. I really yeah. did. Oh, yeah. I believed like, okay, this is what's going to happen. And it just spiraled out of control. 
Eldritch Blast. Asking a DM, like, how long, how many more, how much longer of this do we have? And it's like, what the hell are you asking me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ben, when I finally killed Strahd, when we did Curse of Strahd, like, we had been, it was like the Lich King, man. We've been building this up for so long. And there's like these decisions that you make in Curse of Strahd that then indicate where Strahd is in the castle when you go fight him. And we got like the easiest combination. <laughs> so, like, uh -huh. when we finally, like, finally encountered Strahd, we just whooped him. And it was like, yeah. Haha. -ha. DMs like great. <laughs> the, the, the most heartbreaking moment for me as a DM, and I don't know if this is true of other DMs, but you, you come up with this idea and you're really happy with it. Like, let's say it's a puzzle and you're like, oh, this might be too hard. And then they figure it out in seconds and you're like, oh no, I really thought this was going to take way more time. <laughs> but then simple things that you think are just the obvious shit in the world and you don't even think about challenge. You're like, oh, clearly it's this. They'll, they'll just arrive at the decision immediately. And then it's like, that was three episodes. What yeah. happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh, it's great. It's great. Damn, that sounds so fun right now. Yeah. Our next question comes in from Dway. Hey, allies, this year has been a rough one on top of COVID and the ongoing protests. I lost my sister to cancer. Very sorry to hear that. Mm. I also found out I'm losing my job due to COVID. Also ah. very sorry to hear that. I was curious, what are your go-to comfort games when you need to just take your mind off the world and zone out? Um, this is just extra, but I wanted to thank all the allies for how much entertainment you've given the community. It really has been a comforting place during these uncertain times. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Also, someone give Huber a hug. Hmm. Hug check. Uh, game, it's hard for me to play games when I'm like brutally sad and, and feeling down. So I, I, I watch movies and shows mm. uh, when I'm in that mood. I, I, I can't even like muster the energy really to, to play anything. If I'm like borderline... You know, feeling pretty blue. I try to do some open world checklist stuff. Just zone out, hit some question marks. That that's always a good remedy. But I mostly stick to to movies and games or movies and shows. I mean. To me, it's uh, usually stuff that I've played before, like because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's like comforting, you know. But also, uh, Fire Emblem was like weirdly Three Houses was like weirdly comforting. Uh, just because it was like another life where you could kind of just like do whatever. Yeah. Uh, Journeys on PS Now, and I hadn't checked out PS Now in a while, and I was just like, I was like, I was waiting on Amanda. She was like putting Milo down, and I was just, I'm like, all right, I need something for 20 minutes, and I'm like, yeah, Journey, sure, I'll just jump in and have fun. 20 minutes later, I'm like emotional. It's like, how the hell I played this game like 10 times? Like, how is it? <laughs> There's just something that is just the absolute recipe for just like sucking you into a game's world, and for just the even on like PS Now, which is like that's not, not like the worst looking version of that game you could probably play, because it just chugs, you know, streaming off the service. But uh, I was still just like weepy, you know, just uh, um, kind of letting my emotions run wild. Um, yeah, I usually don't have anything like this, but uh, na yeah, like now that it's out, Animal Crossing has just been the good like. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like get in one. there and like let let your brain turn off for a little bit. Yeah, that's the that's the 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 game that we needed for COVID. At, at the least. Um, there is a game that I have been absolutely addicted to, and it has been a very strange remedy for strange times. And I don't want to say what it is, because I'm trying to work on a video for it. Um, oh, sure, but sure. I know I, I am, yep. Yeah, I'm very excited to get my thoughts out there with it, because it, it was super unexpected for me. Captain, Captain Bob Bob must brings up, yeah, uh, brought it's up not Katamari. <laughs> Catamaran mm -hmm. is definitely for sure. Also on PS now. I find like I don't know. I, is is it weird? Like a lot of people seek out comedy when they're feeling sad, but I seek out like sad movies and shows. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I find like solace in that. I not seek to out see horror. other, not to see people like suffering, but just like that mindset of like I'm not alone mm -hmm. kind of thing. Oh, I mean Hebrew when I was. When I was like chronically depressed as a teenager, I would watch uh, as good as it gets like every night, just because like everyone was so depressed. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hubert, Friday the Thirteenth has been therapeutic, man. Dude, hell yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Feel the kill. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, our last question comes in from Sage Mode Q. 
Hello, allies. Not sure if it's been asked already, but any plans or discussions for easy living? This is very relevant to the conversation we just had. Plenty of plans or discussions for an easy living this year. I know uh, all the beaches. Uh, the beach house is probably out of the question, but maybe a digital version, kind of like Easy X Digital. Thanks and always love and respect. So our gonna, last question. Yeah. Cool. Well, then I can lay the whole thing out. We are going to do beach houses, but we're going to do like partitions. So we're going to have like plastic. We're all going to be in bubbles. And we're going to have like plastic partitions between the all bubbles the could work. Right. So it's going to take like a long time to set up each game. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be lots of squeaking, lots of reflective surfaces. So the lighting's going to be really tricky, but lots of us f from within each other's bubbles, not being able to hear each other, just being like, what? Right. What did he say? <laughs> With the exception of Bloodworth and myself, who will be in the same bubble. Yeah. Oh. You and I are going to quarantine before Easy Living. Yeah, you're going to Got introduce it. each get other the, to get that germ pod. share. Yep. No, uh, but we did. We did just have a meeting uh, this week where we talked about fun stuff we could possibly do in the interim, but it won't. Yeah, it won't have the the, the same vibe as Easy Living. Has. Yeah, I don't think we're going to call it Easy Living, but we're going to do a thing. Mm -hmm. And we even had that discussion, you know, before this monstrous year even right. began last summer. Yeah. Where we were like, okay, I think Easy Living might have run its course. Is there something else we can do? that we can have more control over because it was just like going to some weird house no matter how much we had researched it and how much i had talked to the owner like always had surprises whenever we got there so it's like let's not do that to ourselves um and uh yeah boy i was not i know this is tough times now but like thinking about where i was a year ago when like you guys were at easy living and like i had like the kid in the hospital and it was just like You'd message me like the AC doesn't work. It's like, wait, they promised me. Ah, you know, it's just like, <laughs> just like God being like, you have no control over anything. Like, great, cool. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, we'll have a little more control over what we want to do. And uh, we had already, yeah, like like Joan said, we'd already planned on shifting it up, like yeah. keeping the same spirit, but doing it in a much smarter way. And uh, you can expect something along those lines this year. Yeah. That's the way. That's. Yeah, more more info away. coming probably mm -hmm. soonish, <laughs> when we know a little more. Yeah. Somebody in chat said rough living, and I would love to do like a. <laughs> oh, we've had that idea. A, a, yeah, we've had a, we've had a, a camping idea. Oh. We wouldn't live stream that, but yeah, 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 that'll yeah. that'll happen once we get out of this out of this madness. Jones, one time you said you wanted to go camping with us, and that always really meant a lot to me. I got I know where we're going. I got the spot. Okay. I got multiple spots okay. picked out. The, the dream is Joshua Tree because that's like just a it's, it's not a, it's not a quick drive but it's just so out in the open and, and plus you uh, can get you can get an area to yourself yeah mm -hmm. you can, you're really you're, you can really potentially be far apart whereas like in some locations up in the woods like you are you know you never like, know what what weirdos you're gonna be next to that make a lot of noise or play that, music really late that was one of the, my like, weird like L A culture shock things was like way back in the day at G T I was going to go camping up at Sequoias. And Ezra from GT mm -hmm. like recommended a campsite and he was like, yeah, it's great. Hardly any people at all or whatever. And we get there and there's like a hundred people there, like families, groups, you know? And I was like, in my hometown, you could just go camp by the river and not see someone for two weeks, you know, like right. without a permit, just go. And, and so it's very different. <laughs> the definition of hardly anyone. Ian and Don hit the woods. Yeah, do baby. If we were in Joshua Tree, the there, Ian and yeah. Don hit the boulders. Yeah, uh -huh. hit the Ian and Don sand. hit cactus. Do any of you know how to fish? Yeah, I mean I've you fished before. Eagle Scout, baby. Nice. You, yeah. yeah, I was yeah. I was a Boy Scout. Well. Same. Cool. Same. My, I you used to go don't to, know how to fish. I, I don't know how to fish. No. I used to go up uh, to a, a Snake River in Idaho uh, to hang out with my grandparents, my dad's parents. The first time I went fishing, my grand well, like caught it, and I was like, oh, "I'm scared, but bring out the hook." And my grandpa like grabbed it, yanked the hook out, and then just slammed it against the side of the boat. It was like, <laughs> oh, <damn>. <laughs> <laughs> and just threw it in. Like, all right, next one. So like, yeah, Huber. Like, we we grew up. We'd fish sometimes. Like. Mm -hmm. I, I did all the Midwestern garbage like growing up, but I fell through the ice one time. Like my entire leg fell through the ice Whoa. of an ice fishing hole when I was a Holy kid. Crap. I'll have to take you my... uh, fishing on my land, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Classic. <laughs> the lake on Ben's land. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, we were like driving boats, driving go karts with BB guns. Like, yeah. Like my weird country upbringing. My brother's definitely shot me at the BB gun. I'm sorry, we're winding down the Q and A. I gotta know, Damiani, is that the anti-cat spray? Is that yes. like the, the show? Okay. Pat, <laughs> Pat, is, Pat has currently snuck his way onto the top of the TC tower, 
and has plopped himself on the power button and is uh gnawing on it every time i try and look at you and focus he starts gnawing on it so <laughs> he freezes and when i look away oh here. boy so maybe they could give you but this brings this brings up a point we need to discuss because we started doing the q a back in the studio that worked really well <laughs> i thought we were all in the suit he was just camping out <laughs> on top of it there he goes there. <laughs> See, we miss this if we're back in the studio. So, like, a lot of people have been reaching out to me at Cup of Jones. They're like, you can't. You can't go back to the studio. You can't because if you're in the studio, unless you bring Damiani's cats in, it's just not, not going to be the same. Or Damiani stays at home, and we all check in, do a cat check-in. <laughs> I love the whiplash of seeing, like, Midgar, and then all of a sudden a bedroom, and yeah. then Midgar again. Cats in the no, studio is a good fun. idea. That's fun. Yeah. I'm very, very allergic to cats. We cannot have them in the studio. Good idea, yeah. Ian. Uh, yeah, I just love that. I don't give a shit. Look on the yeah. cat's face. The yes. Cat's like, oh, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. Cats living the dream. What? Hmm? Uh, oh, you, you want this to stay on this counter? Well, look at that. Right. What are you so gonna good. do? So for as always, thank you everybody for who wrote in questions. Uh, ask us about our cats, please. Um, for next month, for July, at the end of the month, I will make a post on Patreon when you. Uh, we're taking submissions, then I will make a submissions post, which will go through your Google Forms. Um, and then uh, we will do another Q&A live on Twitch. Hopefully there will be more cats. Um, thank you to the allies. Also, we're going to be in a couple of hours, we're going to be playing Left 4 Dead 2 together, mm -hmm. which will be super jolly yeah. and fun. Um, and Brandon Jones is going to be hosting that, mm -hmm. which would be great. Uh, anything else that we would like to promote? Uh, showcase coming up uh, with Michael Damiani. I, sh I wanted totally forgot to mention that on Cup of Jones, but the showcase... Uh, Damiani and I next Monday. Wait, a week from Monday or this Monday? Week from this coming Monday. Yep. Or this coming Monday, the sixth, I believe. Yep. Um, so. um, yeah, uh, we can't really say anything about them, but as we were alluding to, we've got a few previews in the works. Mm -hmm. uh, so over the next few weeks, be on the lookout for those. Uh, don't let them get lost in the shuffle. There's some cool games coming up, and uh, yeah, uh, that's. I've recorded one recently. I'm going to record mm -hmm. another one with Brandon tonight. Yep. Uh, I'm going to finish yours right after this call. So nice. we should hopefully get that. Yeah. New uh, new episode of Hunting Hubert tomorrow. A uh, week ahead on Patreon and the public release of the one that's on Patreon right now. Are we allowed to say who it is, the new one coming out? It's our show. We can do whatever we want. Uh, who, who is this new one? I'm pretty sure this one's Damiani. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. I'm going to guess you were hunted with that response. <laughs> that's going to be my prediction. <laughs> Tommy, oh. Oh, Humil yeah. We I would say, this one was a struggle for me. I'm going to say We're working yeah. on Ghost of Tsushima as well. Holy we can say shit. that today. Oh, oh no, yeah. That's okay. that. I saw some people ask in chat. I wasn't yes. sure if today was the day. Yep. I would say that. Huber is humiliated and then hunted. <laughs> ah, the Damiani yes. classic. The Damiani yeah. classic. Yeah. Yeah. First we break him, then we destroy him. Yeah. All right. Break his will and then, and then break his body. Uh, thank you everybody so much for tuning in live or watching this on YouTube or wherever you're, you're getting it from. Uh, enjoyed the questions and we will see you guys soon. <laughs>